Young people across the Middle East are ready for a more hopeful future. And governments throughout the region are realizing that terrorism and Islamic extremism are everyone's common enemy. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of meeting with both the Prime Minister of Israel and a man that's working very hard to become the primary minister of Israel in the longest running election of all time, <laughs> Eddie Gantz of the Blue and White Party. And both leaders joined me to express their support for this effort, proving that State of Israel looking for peace and that peace transcends politics by any measure, <laughs> unmeasurable, that's what they want. On my first trip overseas as president, I visited the Holy Land of Israel. I was deeply moved and amazed by what this small country had achieved in the face of overwhelming odds and never-ending threats. The state of Israel comprises only a minuscule amount of land in the Middle East, and yet it has become a thriving center of democracy, innovation, culture, and commerce. Israel is a light unto the world. The hearts and history of our people are woven together. The land of Israel is an ancient home, a sacred place of worship, and a solemn promise to the Jewish people that we will never again repeat history's darkest hour. During my trip to Israel, I also met with Palestinian President Abbas in Bethlehem. I was saddened by the fate of the Palestinian people. They deserve a far better life. They deserve the chance to achieve their extraordinary potential. Palestinians have been trapped in a cycle of terrorism, poverty, and violence, exploited by those seeking to use them as pawns to advance terrorism and extremism. I returned from my visit determined to find a constructive path, and it's got to be a very powerful path forward in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. To further this effort, I also met with President Abbas at the White House. Forging peace between Israelis and Palestinians may be the most difficult challenge of all. All prior administrations from President Lyndon Johnson have tried and bitterly failed. But I was not elected to do small things or shy away from big problems. It's been a long and very arduous process to arrive at this moment. On Sunday, I delivered to Prime Minister Netanyahu my vision for peace, prosperity, and a brighter future for the Israelis and Palestinians. This vision for peace is fundamentally different from past proposals. In the past, even the most well-intentioned plans were light on factual details and heavy on conceptual frameworks. By contrast, our plan is 80 pages and is the most detailed proposal ever put forward by far. As I have seen throughout my long career as a deal maker, complex problems require nuanced fact-based remedies. That is why our proposal provides precise technical solutions to make Israelis, Palestinians, and the region safer and much more prosperous. My vision presents a win-win opportunity for both sides, a realistic two-state solution that resolves the risk of Palestinian statehood to Israel's security. Today, Israel has taken a giant step toward peace. Yesterday, Prime Minister Netanyahu informed me that he is willing to endorse the vision as the basis for direct negotiations and I will say the general also endorsed and very strongly. All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of a Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Uh, invite your friends if you are interested in the topic. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, peace plan, uh, 
I mean, you see, when, when people, they speak about peace, you know, shouldn't be like we have uh, partners in this peace. I mean, what, what how peace can be a plan of peace if we don't have people who they are there to negotiate? So what what this is? This is really a piece of plan. You know, for me, I find it something totally different. You see, neither Trump, neither Netanyahu, neither the Israeli are stupid. They knew from the first second that what he is saying there, the Mohammedan, they will not accept. Period. So what the point of this? You know what I mean? If they will not accept it, so why they are making this offer? It's a very smart move. This is not a peace plan. This is a plan where I'm going to show the world that I am a person who want peace. And I'm going to do the plan, you like it or not. What does that mean exactly? If you go to the map, <clears throat> you see the map they are uh, talking about, as you see it in the screen. There's nothing new. I mean, everything will stay the same. All what they are saying to them, well, you know, we are going to make you uh, a country inside the country, and we will give you, uh, you know, what you have already, which means local government. Uh, yet we are the one who control the borders, and you have no borders anyway. And uh, you cannot have airplane. You cannot have heavy, uh, heavy, heavy duty weapon. Um, we will invest heavily uh, to make you have better life and that's it and this is will not happen so what will happen what will happen is that they are going to take Jerusalem in full and this is the this is what behind this plan that Jerusalem is a final point where no return you will never ever think even to have it and by having this plan we are approving borders and those borders have conditions which mean you don't really have borders you are just a state inside a state a state with no uh, you know no authority now the Mohammedan they will not accept and um, peace will never happen and war will continue so what the benefit of this the benefit is very simple This is the Middle East. Let us zoom in. And this is the small, tiny Israel. And those dots you see there are in the middle of Israel, which is really very bad problem to Israel. I don't know if you can notice the dots. Let me put them in the screen. Those uh, here is what it's called the West uh, Bank. All right. Now, you will notice with me that this West Bank is taking most of Israel, actually. I mean, it is like uh, the, the, <laughs> the chest of Israel. Very horrible. So Israel as a country until now is not really stable, even though they have all the technology or etc. But having this land taken out of them is a big issue, causing security issue, strategic issue. Um, I mean, imagine you have the enemy in the heart of your house. So this plan simply is trying to enforce certain rules and trying to enforce, you know, taking advantage of the weakness of the Arab these days, where Saudi Arabia is very uh, secretly having negotiation with Israel, and uh, Emirates and Bahrain and Kuwait, etc. And what they will try to do, they will try to make it, okay, let us start having a conversation, 
And then that will open, uh, let us say, uh, some Arabian countries will start opening embassies and etc. And then the Palestinians, they will find themselves, they have no support from anyone. And then they have to agree uh, at the end of the day because there is no support. However, I believe still this is a very stupid plan. It's not going to work. And if a Trump, he want my plan, I will be happy to help him. This is what can bring peace to Israel. And this is my plan. If I am the one in charge, I will take all of Jordan, because this is there is no country, it's called Jordan. This is a big fat lie. Jordan is a country created by the British occupation. All of this land, it's called Jordan, does not exist. There was never before a country, it's called Jordan. There was never a king, was king of Jordan. We never heard of an authority government before. It's called the authority of Jordan. So this is a country belong to Israel. If the, if the Israeli are smart, they should took all this land, which really belong to them, and then those who they are living here, they will not affect them. And either they leave or they stay and accept to be, uh, you know, let us say they have to give them local independent uh, government uh, inside the country, but they will not have a citizenship. As they are saying, like, uh, we will, you are a state. And the reason they want to make them a state because they don't want to give them citizenship of Israel. For that will change the demographic uh, number of uh, the Jews uh, percentage in the country uh, because those people they you know as you know they are Muslims they have babies every every few months they have babies not like the Jews you know a Jewish family they have like two or three those people in in 20 years they will have 40 babies so it's not for the benefit of them to keep those people here so the Israeli if they already want to do something smart they have the power they have the ability to take their land back and this is their land, you know, take it back. Uh, 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 the, those who live in Jordan, those are Bedouin, Arab Bedouin, they don't belong to this land. They can push them away and they can push those who they claim to be Palestinian. You see, those are not Palestinian. Those people here, they are not Palestinian. There is no Palestinian there. Those are, even, even Muslims agree that the first time the Arab entered that land, it was during the time of Umar ibn Khattab, the Caliphate. This is the first time ever. Nobody speak Arabic there. There's no Arab. Jerusalem never was for the Arab. This land was never Arab. And they have nothing to do with it. But the problem is that today Israel, uh, it, it, it have a it have an illness. It's called liberals, and liberals they are always uh, you know they are uh, let us say they are not really uh, into a country as much they are in, like a socialist. They don't believe in a country. They don't believe in a border. They don't believe in in a country. It's called Israel. You know they are very liberal. You know they are hippies. And those hippies, they don't care really uh, how to do it. Just let us, uh, uh, you know, uh, accept each other and live in peace. And they, they are dreamers. You know, they are dreamers about things to happen in such a way. But all of us, we knew that the Muhammadan, they are very much motivated by religion. This is not about the land. You see, even if all the Jews left that land, are you going to have peace with the Jews? Never. Muhammad, he told them to kill every single Jew in the earth. So you live in Israel, you live in, uh, in Canada, you live in... Uh, it doesn't matter where you live. You are the enemy, and the Quran speak about you, and the Muslims have to do the order. So, uh, Netanyahu and Trump, they are trying to contain a problem which Israel have in the moment because of the left. Israel is not really a country as it used to be uh, in the time of David where people they are religious and people they are willing to sacrifice their life to defend their freedom and their borders and their temple uh, today you know israel wanna uh, wanna live like everybody and uh, they are willing to compromise 
and uh, you know there is let us say some red lines they cannot sacrifice but if Netanyahu go and left liberal come you know uh, government come they might give up Jerusalem you never know they might even give up uh, half of Israel and you know the more they give up the more they lose because you soon look what happened not long time ago Yasser Arafat was con considered by all countries in the world as a terrorist all countries in the world consider him a terrorist then the stupid American and the stupid Israeli they shake hands with Yasser Arafat in Camp David by shaking hands with Yasser Arafat he the, the whole world start calling him a president so instead of a guy who kidnap airplanes ask for ransoms this is what he do suddenly they make him a president hoping that by shaking hands with him that will bring peace but you are a dreamer stupid uh, and then the, the, the drama continue uh, they give them Gaza here we go this is Gaza suddenly they would withdraw from Gaza they give it to those who call them today Palestinian but they are not Palestinian as we know okay after giving them Gaza did you have peace no Gaza became a center of terrorism and center of Hamas so why you give them Gaza I mean did you even have conditions with them okay we will give you Gaza and do peace etc shake hands no just you know just leave Gaza and give it to them and now Gaza became a center of terrorism same as the West Bank, same as all of this area. So you gave them all this area for what? Why even you give it to them? You have it. This is your land. What was the purpose of giving this land to them? Nothing, stupid. And after giving them all this land, did they shake hands with you? No. Okay, they agreed for peace? No. Are they going to have peace with you ever? No. So why you are doing it? because they are doing politics you see uh, america usa england france they don't have leaders they have people who work in politics and politics is just about winning elections and those who they are worried about elections more than their country is winning they will never bring victory to their country you know when uh, when the iranian they shot missiles uh at USA bases or let's say the Iraqi bases in Iraq Trump he did not do anything the reason for that because you know he is the same as all people who work in politics he is a potato I'm trying to be nice to say he is a person who prefer to win the election better than winning a war you know what I mean so he want to be a president for the coming four years so the Iranian they hit he did not hit back because that will affect his election and this is exactly what's happening in israel those who they call themselves leaders they are not leaders they are potatoes or what they care for how to win the elections and for the sake of the election they are willing to sacrifice their own family just make me a president make me a prime minister because all is about business and not about money and they are corrupt uh, i know i believe netanyahu is a big corrupt man you know and one day he will end in jail sooner or later because of that the those who they uh, they call them palestinian who I, I said clearly they are not palestinian they knew the situation they knew that those people they are doing politics they are not real leaders so they will reject anything because they knew that nobody is going to force them to accept peace you see in order to uh, to to make peace you have to force it Peace doesn't happen by two, uh, uh, you know, many people they say to you, okay, we have two parties agree. No, there is no two party ag agrees. There's one party have to agree, which means there's a winner and there's a loser. Otherwise, why they want to go for peace if both of them believe that they own the same land? Nobody would do that. Especially the Mohammedan, they want Jerusalem. The Jews, they want Jerusalem. So who is going to have Jerusalem? How we can agree for peace? How this peace will happen? Never will happen. Never, never. You know? So Israel, sooner or later, have to understand that the only way to bring peace is to force it. And how to force it? Those who don't agree with it, they must leave. 
If you don't want to live in peace with us, you better leave. If you want to kill our children, we will not let you stay here. So Israeli, they have to wait until one day they have a president, or let us say, uh, uh, David, King David, a real leader, not a potato. Right now, they have potatoes. And you know, uh, Trump, he go on TV and he says, we are going to invest $50 billion. It, it doesn't matter what you invest. And by the way, why you want to invest $15 billion? Those people, they don't like it. You think if you offer Jim jobs, they will work? They don't work. You see, all those who you call them refugee, they take salary, free food, free rice, free electricity, free water. Since, uh, since the time of Israel supposedly attacked them. And they love it. They don't work. They don't work. Nobody work. United Nation and the money is coming from USA, coming from Canada, coming from Europe. Uh, they are the one who is paying for their bills. It's fun. So you go to the West Bank, you see nobody is working. <laughs> you know, the funny they say that you have a very high unemployment. The whole country is not employed. What they do there? I mean, what is the jobs they do there? What they provide? What they make? Nothing. So it's kind of a, a comedy uh, uh, where, where you know, uh, Trump, he speak about uh, we are going to uh, invest $50 billion to give you jobs. You think those people will work? They give them every month cheese. I'm serious. Cheese, free bread, free flour. Free salt, free rice, uh, 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 free health uh, uh, care, free medicine. All of this coming from the United Nations because supposedly those are refugee. So they will not work. They will never work. And all what they do, have sex, have babies. And then they complain, why we don't have even enough uh, like a, a resource? I mean, you, you will see a guy, he have one room, he live in it. And then he have 20 children. And they blame Israel. Right, so this peace plan, as I see it, is kind of like uh, uh, advertising that Israel is a country who want peace, in the same time is giving a green line to Israel to take full control of Jerusalem. Which means this is not a peace plan; this is a plan to start. Let us say I'm giving you the green light to take over Jerusalem in full because this is nobody will do it nobody will join it and uh, I believe that there is negotiation happening between Israel and some Arab countries like Saudi Arabia Emirat preparing for the coming two or three years where they will launch a big war against Iran you see the coming uh, in the year 2020 this year at the end of the year we will have election and then most likely, you know, uh, Trump, he will win. Uh, and if Trump won the election, then he is not going to worry about election anymore. So the last four years of his presidency is going to be the most dangerous to Iran. Because this guy now is not worried about Democrat and election, who vote for him, who don't vote for him. He is going to spank the hell of Iran. So the honeymoon of Iran is over. And this is what is going to be, this is what they are cooking for. In, you know, next year or the year after, Trump and Israel and Saudi Arabia and Emirat and those countries, they are going to launch a big war against Iran. And the war is to demolish all their, uh, let us say, uh, facility which can be threat, all their uh, missiles, all their manufacturers and even maybe to collapse the whole regime uh, otherwise there is no peace plan and actually you can tell I mean listen to those uh, listen to Trump what he's saying you know I mean he's talking about peace plan but you can tell right away there's no peace plan it's the opposite with the Palestinians a historic breakthrough historic breakthrough. likewise we have really uh a situation having to do with 
a race that is taking place right now. It will end and we have the support, and it's very important to say this, of both parties and almost all people in Israel. They want peace and they want peace badly. This is the first time Israel has authorized the release of a conceptual map illustrating the territorial compromises it's willing to make for the cause of peace, and they've got a long way. This is an unprecedented and highly significant development. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for having the courage to take this bold step forward. I mean, uh, thank you for having the courage. I mean, what this guy do? I mean, what he did already, I mean, he did nothing. What 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 he's talking about? Being the courage, you know, this guy, he just he, you know, like this is a King David, you know, he took back Jerusalem. I mean, what this guy, what, what he did? Nothing. I mean, this is this is very very funny uh, advertising commercial. So now everybody will will say, okay, look, there was us Israeli, they are sh they want to shake hands with those Muslims, and the Muslims they are saying no. The Muslims will say no. It doesn't matter. You want to shake hands. You want to shake bum. It doesn't matter. You want what you want to shake. Those people believe only in war, and if they cannot find Jews to fight them, they will fight themselves. You know, like right now, if you if you uh, 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 if you give them opportunity, uh, those who you, they call themselves Palestinian in Gaza, like the, the reason now they are not killing each other. Because Gaza is under the control of Hamas, and the West Bank is under the control of uh, the terrorists of Yasser Arafat. So there is there is distance between them. You see, this is Gaza. <laughs> this is why they are not killing each other. <laughs> this is Gaza, and this is the West Bank. So the only reason they are not slaughtering each other is the Israeli, the Israeli between. Take the Israeli between them, and you will see they will eat each other alive. So. Uh, uh, those people always actually, when you ask them to shake hands, they think they are important. You know what I mean? They think they are important. That they they look at you from above, like he want to shake hands. That means you are weak. You know, this is not really uh, uh, a good thing for for for, for uh, let us say um, for someone he understands the situation. But as I said, it's a smart move. To make Israel as a country wanted peace and they are willing to compromise and the, the those who they call them Palestinian they will look like like a bunch of idiots who they don't want peace and look what happened exactly as what I'm saying happened right away the stupid they call him the president of the Palestinian Abbas he announced to cut his relationship between USA and the Palestinian and uh, uh, Palestinian and Israel right away this is how stupid they are and that will make them look really stupid talk to them negotiate say I don't agree this is not etc but you got your relationship okay cut relationship now now Trump officially he have a reason to stop sending money to them they cut relationship with us where we will send them money so they are stupid. This guy uh, Abbas, look at him. I mean, he is like a he's like a, a a can full of bad spoiled food, and he when he opened his mouth, he says stupid things. You know, smart leaders they don't do this. They don't say, oh, "I'm going to cut relationship with you. I do not need you. You are strong. You are living inside Israel. You have no borders. You have no friends. Even the Arab don't like them." Even the Arab don't support them. Go and see those who they call them Palestinian, how they live in every Islamic countries. They isolate them, they don't support them, they don't like them, they discriminate them, and they watch them carefully. I'm not making things up. Go and see. Wherever they go, and look, nobody trusts them too. If you remember, <clears throat> I mean, history talk. When when Saddam Hussein he attacked Kuwait. This is Kuwait. Saddam Hussein he launched an invasion. 
against Kuwait. Palestinians, they live in Kuwait like kings. You know kings? Good jobs, fancy salaries, the best of jobs. The prince of Kuwait was really spoiling them in a way you will not believe it. Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. The first people to betray the Kuwaiti people was the Palestinian. The first. And then the American, they got Kuwait back. The first thing the Kuwaiti they did, they kicked every single Palestinian out. Get out. They always betray. The king of Jordan, <clears throat> he slaughters tens of thousands. You see, the king of Jordan, they claim that they are, you know, they love Palestinian, they defend the Palestinian right, blah, blah, blah. Nobody killed Palestinians as the king of Jordan. Nobody. If we do a little search, let me do so you can see in the screen what I'm talking about. Give me a second. Let us see, Jordanian army. Let us see what we can find. Here we go. You can search right now for something is called the Black September. The Black September. What is the Black September? September. Those who they supposedly call Palestinians, they immigrate by tens of thousands to the area of Jordan. And the king of Jordan, he welcomed them. Um, you know, he gave them shelters. And right away after, because their number became more than the population of the Jordanian people, they want to take and throw away the king and they want to rule. So Yasser Arafat want to be the king. So suddenly the king of Jordan, he found himself would be thrown out. So he ordered his army to launch an attack on the army and the Palestinians uh, uh, militant. And it was what it's called the Black September, where they start bombing every shelter for the Palestinians, where they have their weapon, where they have their army, etc. But if you ask a Jordanian king about how much he loved the Palestinian, he will say, I love them. They are my people. I'm here to protect them. But his father, he slaughtered from the Palestinian more than all the wars together in 50, 60 years with Israeli. You know what I mean? Always, always, they try to take over the place they go to. The same they did in Lebanon. In Lebanon, they went there as refugee. After they enter Lebanon, suddenly they want to take over Lebanon. Imagine Yasser Arafat, he welcomed Fidel Castro, Fidel Castro, the president of Cuba. He came to visit uh, Yasser Arafat in Beirut and the president of Lebanon, he himself, he have no idea. They just told him the president of Cuba is here. Okay, and who is welcoming him? He's coming to visit us? They said, no, he's coming to visit Yasser Arafat. They controlled the airport. <laughs> they took over it. Security, police, they are the government, they are the country. That's it. 
those Palestinians they want to take over Lebanon. This is how the war started in Lebanon. You know what I mean? My friend Eric, forget about prophecy right now. Focus with me in what's happening. I mean, you see, there is a problem that's anything happening in the world, we have to go and find a prophecy about it. Right? Anything happened, we need to find a prophecy about that. Can we can't we talk about things happening without prophecy? I mean, do we need a, do we need a prophecy to talk about this? Focus with me, please. And no need to repeat the text twice. And so, the Palestinian, or they call themselves Palestinian, they have a very bad reputation of betraying any country will come them. They did that in Beirut, in Lebanon. They did that in Jordan. They did the same in Kuwait. They did the same in Saudi Arabia. They did the same as in Emirat. So they are not welcome anywhere. Nobody will come there. Very, very bad history. And the one who is saying his name is Vida, saying should refute all the 120 lies. My friend, the Muslims, if they say I have 120 lies, that means they are stupid because I thought everything I say is a lie. So you are saying to me only 120 things I said against Muhammad is a lie? That's mean the rest are true. That's mean Muhammad is a scumbag. This is how stupid the Muslims are, who says that to you that those are lies. Because from all, I'm, I'm, I'm exposing Muhammad for the last God knows how many years, only 120 lies I say the brother, only? I thought everything I say is a lie. That's mean Muhammad is a horrible man. <laughs> All right, stupid people. You should refute the 120 lies. You know, what about you call me? Let us see if I can refute or not, if you have the guts. But you are potatoes, the same as your prophet, the same as the Palestinian there. Do you see them? Potatoes. Potatoes. If they are men who they have, they can prove me wrong. Who is holding him from calling me in Skype? It's for free. Get me busted life on air. But they are potatoes. They are not even, I don't know. They are just uh, rabbits. Like your prophet. Your prophet, when he was between the Jews and he was weak, he was a rabbit. You know, I love you. The same as they're saying now. I love you. I want to have peace with you. You know, when he got strong, you want to kill them all. All right. <clears throat> This whole situation is a crazy, uh, somebody saying. <clears throat> My friend, this is the Middle East. It is the land of the crazy. Nothing there is, nothing there makes sense. However, we need to understand that this war is not about a land. This war is about religion. The reason all those who they are around Israel, they are rejecting Israel because they are Jews. As simple as that. If Netanyahu, his name is Muhammad, then you, you can take over land and you can take over Saudi Arabia. Nobody care. Did you ask yourself, Turkey occupied now big part of Syria. Which Arab country is complaining? Nobody. Nobody. Why, why the Arab don't go in Europe and strike? You know, how come when you attack, when Israel attack Hamas, uh, hundreds of thousands of Muslims go in Europe? Allahu Akbar, they are killing the Israeli, and the Israeli are criminals. How come when the Turkish, they attack the north of Syria and kill tens of thousands of Kurdish people? Nobody go in the street and nobody complain. Very simple. Erdogan is a Muslim. You know what I mean? So we need to understand the problem. The problem is not the land. The problem is religion. Those pe people believe that the Jews are first, the Christian are, you know, they, they say they say it, they go in the Middle East, they say, Saturday first, Sunday ne uh, 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 next, which means we, we, we slaughter the Jews first, and then we slaughter the Christians after. So it is not about a land. It's about religion. Even if you give all the lands, if you give, okay, let us say the Jews, they decide to give Jerusalem, God forbid, you know, I hope they will never be stupid and do that. 
uh, to the Muslims. Hmm, this is Jerusalem. Do you think the, 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 they will have peace? Do you think so? Never. Never ever. So each time you give them a land, they want to push you back. They want you to go back. Give us more. Give us more. Give us more. Give us more. And then they will throw you in the ocean as the dream is. And then if you if you are a Jew and you leave Israel and you move to Canada, you, they will leave you alone? No. <laughs> it's not about the land. This is have nothing to do with the land. This is just about religion. And anyone don't want to understand that he because he is a stupid. <coughs> Let us see some background of the religion. This is what Muhammad said, which Muslims, every single Muslim, believe. Do you see what Muhammad taught them? Muhammad taught them that before the judgment they come, you have a duty as a Muslim to slaughter every single Jew. It doesn't matter where he live. Read carefully. Muhammad is talking the big scumbag. The last hour would not come unless the Muslim will fight against the Jews. The Jews. Any Jews. There's no Israel. When Muhammad was talking here, there's no Israel. That land was occupied by the Roman. There's only the Roman there. I mean, there's Jews, but there's little tiny number because they, they flee from the Roman. Uh, after the attack of the Persian, the Roman, they seek revenge from the Jews because they took side with the Persian. So when they took Jerusalem back, most of the Jews, they flee from Jerusalem. So Muhammad now, he's talking, there is no Israel. The country as Israel does not exist. He is saying that time will not, you know, the judgment day will not come until you fight against the Jews and the Muslim would kill them, would kill them all. Until what? Until the Jew, like now Jews are running for their life, would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree. And then the stone and the tree would say, Hey, Muslim or servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me. Kill him. Do you see it? So this is not about a land. You see, at this moment, Muhammad is not taking talking about uh, Palestine. Actually, the Quran say clearly that this land is the land of the, Jew of the Jews. If you go to the Quran, chapter 5, verse 21, it says clearly that Allah told Moses that this holy land is assigned to the Jews. So those who think that they can have a peace agreement, they are a bunch of fools. That will never happen. What will happen is, as the Quran said, Cry not for peace when you are the uppermost, which means they might sign an agreement with you, but this will be temporarily. Iran support Palestinian claiming that they are just would support other country while their northern neighbor Armenia still has. Yeah. No, you see, Iran, you see, Iran, the Iranian regime is very evil. And they are not supporting Palestinians because they believe they are just. You see, Iran is spreading Shiaism inside all Arab territories. The target of Iran is to spread Shia. <clears throat> so, if you go now to the to uh, uh, to the Strip of Gaza, you will find the number of Shia is growing really big because a lot of money is coming from Iran to this area. And then you will find like uh, Kata'ib al-Qassam and etc. Those are uh, uh, sponsored totally. And there's many of them. Most of them, they are actually Shia. Uh, they want to spread Shiaism. So they will have a power inside the Middle East, inside Arabian countries, which they hate them very much. Because this is the only way Iran 
can force itself on Middle Eastern countries in Arab countries. If you go in Lebanon, Hezbollah is a Shia, right? So Iran is using the Shia in Lebanon to be their arms in case Israel ever attack them. Hezbollah will launch an attack on Israel because they are in the borders. Same or for others, it's an investment. Iran is investing. Like now, if America, they will launch an attack on Iran, well, they will not fight Iran alone. They will fight all the friends of Iran. Who are the friends of Iran? Hezbollah in Lebanon. Uh, even Hamas, Al Qassam, all those terrorist organizations in Israel. Uh, what about Yemen? They can close all the oil supply coming from this area because the Yemen most of it now half of Yemen most of more, more than half is controlled by al-Houthi which is a Shia he's a kind of a Shia and he is controlled by Iran so the Iranian the the uh, you know they use let us say those are a proxy they use them to fight their enemies so when they need them they will go and they move all together so when when Trump he hit uh, Soleimani in, in Baghdad you remember that's the Shia militant in Baghdad they are the first one to fight so Iran will not fight you by their own army mostly Iran will fight you by the Shia the Arab Shia and this is the fear of the Muslim Sunni the Muslim Sunni are being defeated badly they are getting weaker and weaker and weaker you see Saudi Arabia is a Muslim Sunni and Iran can eat them as easy as eating a snack Emirat is not even a country is nothing same as Kuwait same as Bahrain Oman is kind of a Shia country like they have their own sect they are they are considered close to the Shia more than the Sunni and Oman the the, the Sultan of Oman he just passed away a few weeks ago and the new Sultan is the same as the previous Sultan they don't involve in any side they, didn't, they don't take side this is the only way to secure themselves. They have no side. They don't side with the Arab. They don't side with Iran. They are friends with everybody. So uh, uh, Iran is a big problem for everybody. However, Iran will never attack Israel. See, Iranians are smart. They knew that Israel can really wipe Iran from the map. It's not a secret. However, Iran have to invest in their security. So if ever Israel want to attack them, then they can launch attack by their proxy like Hezbollah in Lebanon. And now because of the war in Syria, uh, Hezbollah is all over in Syria. Hezbollah, the Iraqi Hezbollah, the Iranian Hezbollah. There's more than 200,000 Iranian soldiers right now as we speak in Syria. Right? So all of this is an investment for Iran in case sooner or later they attack Iran however this is all will not really help Iran because all those militants they are you know let us say they are cave time uh, force you know what I mean it's they are not really a force you can trust they are not really an army you, you can really can can uh, can make a big difference they are a ground army and they are limited in their ability they have like normal weapon you know they buy from Czechoslovakia etc like uh, heat missiles this is the bit this is the highest technology they have like you know so they don't have really heavy duty uh, weapon Iran was able in the last let us say 30 years to build a lot of heavy duty weapon but those are really not going to be successful because you know the Israeli will destroy them before even they use them if a war started so I'm not really worried about Iran can do anything but I believe that the Israeli and the Saudi and the Emirati they are making an agreement under the table that when the war start with Iran those countries they will be united under the command of USA and Bahrain Those countries, they will launch a big attack on Iran altogether. Now, 
for sure Saudi Arabia is not really a powerful country but they have the money Emirati they have the money Bahrain they have the money which means they are going to supply or they say the cost of the war is going to be on them you know what I mean the same exactly happening right now I mean they they send 6,000 troops USA troops to Saudi Arabia and Saudi are paying for them <clears throat> uh, uh, Turkey you know <laughs> you know Erdogan this this guy is like a rat Erdogan literally is like a rat he put his head up just to make noise but he fought he fought too much but this guy he do nothing you see Turkey is one of the biggest countries in the Middle East who have trade business with Israel and this is expose all what Erdogan is about if you are really angry from Israel what about you cut all the trade agreement with Israel which is by billions hmm? what about you close the embassy what about you stop security information sharing intelligence what about you stop training for your intelligence the intelligence in Israel which means there is agents imagine they send them to Israel to get a training in Israel for the Turkish government so Turkey outside is anti-Israel but in reality Turkey is the puppy who don't dare to play with Israel their economy can collapse trades all the trade happened with, with with Europe is happening through Israel uh, <clears throat> so anyway uh, Turkey is not really a threat to Israel Turkey Turkey is a collapse country Turkey is not even a country you see I, I expect Turkey to collapse in the coming maximum maybe 20 30 years because the country is out of source there's nothing and this is why Erdogan is desperate he signed an agreement with the uh, with the false government of Libya the Muslim Brotherhood in, in Libya and the agreement is they want to control all this area uh, in the sea but for sure European will not let them do it um, Israel will not let them do it uh, Greece will not let them do it France will not let them do it so this guy is uh, Erdogan is desperate for energy they start digging for oil in the front of Cyprus they went crazy because everybody is getting oil except them you know Israel they found gas and oil Egypt they find gas and oil Lebanon they found gas and oil and Turkey have nothing so they are going crazy uh, so Turkey is uh, is like a uh, you know Erdogan I find him like a, like a like a lice and this lice will stuck in any skin will give it blood because they are out of a blood and the only reason Turkey is not collapsing until now is Qatar if you remember just uh, just last year the Turkish economy almost collapsed almost and then the Prince of Qatar he fly right away and he promised to supply Turkey with a bunch like five six billion dollars immediately you know and they are interest free uh, so the only reason for Turkey is not collapsing yet is this little tiny island which have a lot of oil a lot of money and they do not know what to do with it right but Turkey uh, I believe uh, I believe Erdogan look look what happened here just to show you how stupid this Erdogan Erdogan have a big dream his dream collapse but not because of Trump not because of Israel actually it's the opposite <clears throat> let me show you All right. Let us put it for you on the screen. All right. This is the war map in Syria, which means this is Syria and the war inside Syria. Let us zoom in a little bit. 
to show you how horrible the situation is for Erdogan. Erdogan in the beginning of the war, the map was already totally different. The map was almost the opposite. It was the Muslim Brotherhood and the Muslim terrorist controlling most of Syria. Literally. So we can say that all this territory, this is the only territory left. Let us use different color. We will use a black. This territory, only the territory, oh, this is, okay, hold on. All right. This is the only territory was in the control of the Syrian government. That's it. The rest is out of their hand. Erdogan, he was hoping that his Islamic Mujahideen, the terrorist, they will take over Damascus in less than maybe eh, two months. Obama, he went in TV, he says, that's it, the regime collapse. Uh, everybody, everybody, the French president, the prime minister of England, uh, everybody, you know, they were, they were counting days where the president of Syria will collapse and that's it. The Muslim fighters will take over it and this will be an Islamic state. And ISIS started, and Al-Qaeda. And ISIS took a lot of distance, almost all this area, all the way to, to Iraq. So anyway, like ISIS became bigger than Iraq and Syria together. However, then suddenly, the Russian, they got involved. What happened is, when the Muslim terrorists, they start getting closer to this area here, they start attacking this area, this area full of Christians. It's a mountain area and it's a Christian territory. The patriarch of the Orthodox, you know, Syria, number one population in Christians there is a Greek Orthodox. They send their, uh, the patriarch, he went all the way to Moscow and he met with the patriarch of Moscow. The Patriarch of Moscow and the Patriarch of Syria, they met together with Putin. Then Putin, in the middle of nowhere, suddenly the, the foreign minister of Syria, they fly all the way to, to Russia. And then two days after, they announce that the Russian, they are going to join forces with the Syrian army. And that was a disaster for Erdogan. And since then, and now, actually, now as we speak, the Russians are bombing with no mercy the Muslim Mujahideen of Erdogan, killing them, killing thousands of them every week. You see in the map here, you see a green and there is like a, a, a bombs. Let us go here. Let us zoom in. You see here there's bombing. So the red area is the is the area controlled by the Syrian army and the Rus and the Russian, and now they are bombing them and they are eating land very fast. Just a few days ago, I mean this map is horrible. You click somewhere, it goes out of control. Let us do it again. Hold on. Yeah, it's very fast to zoom in. I'm not sure how we can zoom in without losing control <clears throat> okay yeah if you notice here with me this is an area just they occupied just two days ago you know i watch news all over the middle east with no exception to be always updated this is a city they took over it just less than 24 hours ago, the Russian and the Syrian army. So Erdogan now, he is really in a very bad shape. His terrorists are losing ground. Soon they will take the city. Soon they will take the city here. There is a city next to it here. And then soon they will take the biggest center of terrorism in the world. It's called Idlib. 
and they will take over it. So the Muslim Mujahideen are defeated and their Allah is not doing a good job. Uh, so soon all this area, which Erdogan was hoping to keep as, let us say, a strong paper of negotiation with the Russian, soon he will lose it. And in the top of that, Erdogan, now he have a big problem. Those terrorists who they are trying now to escape, where they will go? He will not let them come to Turkey because they are real terrorists. They can destroy his country and they might even kill him for he betrayed them. Let me show you some pictures. <clears throat> Give me a second. All right. If you look with me here on the screen, let me show you. Do you see like the highway? Tens of thousands of civilian cars trying to escape. Why? Because the Russian and the Syrian army are taking over. City after city. One after one. Erdogan, he cannot protect them. His Mujahideen are potatoes. They are being smashed left and right. And the only thing they can do is to run. So now Erdogan is in a problem. Where, he, where those people will run? I mean, they are terrorists. There's more than 80,000 Al-Qaeda terrorists in that territory. Erdogan, he will never let them go inside Turkey. So where they will go? Most likely, Erdogan, he is going to take them all the way to Libya. Already he sent couple of thousands of them to Libya right so uh, uh, Erdogan is bankrupt his plan to take over Syria his plan was very simple he will take over Syria this is by the help of Obama and he will establish an Islamic state he will be the caliphate you know he will be the caliphate oh boy I mean this website full of advertising hold on Now we have advertising for Walmart. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Walmart. All right. We are back here. All right. So here you will see that uh, uh, the Kurdish are controlling the yellow area and those are the enemy of Erdogan. The red is controlled by the Syrian regime and the Russian, which is most of Syria. Oh, we go. Advertising again. Uh, you won, uh, you are only 100 users selected. That's it. I won, guys, I won 1,000 gift card. <laughs> I mean, what a scam. You see how they let us close it. It looks like this is an infected website. <clears throat> Farid, he said, do you want to call him? He want me to call him right now? How are you, Farid? Are you Mr. Farid? Or you are a fake one? Uh, this is fake one. Get lost. Let your daddy, real Farid, come over. <clears throat> Potato. You see, if he is real, I will speak to him nicely because 
you know i mean he he would be my guest i would be i would be happy to have you you know at least we will have a good laugh <laughs> right there is no way he will dare to come here anyway <clears throat> so uh, uh israel should take advantage and actually i think they are this is what they are doing right now middle eastern countries arab countries specifically islamic countries are extremely weak they are in the term of collapsing you see libya have war yemen have war egypt eh, don't even think about it jordan is bankrupt Jordan is the most bankrupt country in the Middle East. I mean, this 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 country, Jordan, they are unlucky. They have nothing. They have no water. They have no gas. They have no but no no oil. They have no greenery. They have no rivers. They have nothing. I mean, this country is 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 made to be dead, and the dead. The only thing they have is the Dead Sea, and it's dead. And look, as long as we are mentioning the Dead Sea, just to show you how arrogant those uh, uh, people are. The Israeli, the Jews are smart people. You know, there's no doubt about them. They offer the Jordanian government a very good deal. They said to them, we will open a tunnel all the way from the Mediterranean Sea to the Dead Sea. To the where? To the Dead Sea. Uh, the stupid, the King of Jordan, because he's a potato. Oh no, uh, we will not do business with the Israeli. You, you, you are dying. You are dead. And the Dead Sea is dead. By making such a water conflict with the Mediterranean, there is many problems can be solved. Uh, aren't they talking about the global warming? They are, right? So you have a big, big area is empty. Like the Dead Sea is almost dead. There's nothing. I mean, it's dead already. I mean, it's, uh, this is what they call it, Dead Sea. But there is almost, there is no water. It became like a little tiny lake. So by opening that tunnel between the, the Mediterranean all the way to the Dead Sea, they can generate a lot of electricity. They can bring life to that area. More rain and more irrigation because simply, you know, when you bring water, from the sea and you make a new sea exist in the middle of the desert that will bring a lot of water as simple as that so the jordanian because of their hate to the jews they refuse that idea otherwise this will be the best solution for them and the israeli they are willing to do it and they will pay for it but because they hate the jews they could not go for such a deal just because of their hate if you go and see right now the, the Dead Sea, I mean, nothing left of it. Because every year they have less and less and less rain and it's it's dead. Let me see if I can find you an image for the Dead Sea right now. It's nothing. There is not just salt. So they offer him, but this is what hate does, you know. Uh... <clears throat> Let us see. Yeah, this this is the Dead Sea. It's, it it became a small tiny lake. There's nothing. You know the the it's salt. There's nothing but salt, and uh, it's dying. It's a small tiny lake like the Lake Tahoe in California. Imagine if this land is in the hand of the Jews, they will make it paradise. I assure you that. You saw, you, go, uh, uh, you know, the, the city of Yathrib in Saudi Arabia, which is called today in Medina, which Muhammad, he killed the Jews and he took over it. That city was the biggest farm in the Arabian Peninsula in the time of the Jews. Why? Because the Jews are the one in control. Very smart people. They were able to make the desert a big farm. This is why you see when, when they speak in the Quran, if you go in the Quran, there is a verse about Friday. 
but there is a secret behind this verse. <clears throat> you know, when uh, uh, when people they are called for a prayer in the day of a Friday, nobody come. Nobody come. Why? Anyone remember why? Why on Friday nobody come? <clears throat> Let us see if somebody remember. Because of the Jews. The Jews, the, okay, when Sabbath will start? Sabbath. The biblical Sabbath. Which day started? Sabbath doesn't start really in in in, uh, in like Sabbath today, like Saturday today. Sabbath start Friday. When sunset in Friday, Sabbath is ready. That is is that's it. You are you are into the Sabbath. You know what I mean? So look what happened. Because the Jews are the only one who do business. They are the farmers. They are the trader. They are the one who give life to the city. In Friday, nobody come to pray. Nobody. To the point Muhammad, he have to make a verse about it. Oh, who you believe. When the call of prayer proclaimed on the day of Friday, come. Nobody's coming. Why? Because the Jews will close their stores soon. Are you getting the point? The Jews, they will shut down. They will not sell. They will not buy. They will not do business in a few hours. So they have to buy before the Jews, they close. And when Muhammad, he killed the Jews, Arabian Peninsula became bankrupt. There's no business. And this is why he decided right away to launch war asking for jizya as a solution. You know, uh, I mean, it's like amazing. If you are a person from the Middle East, you know what I'm talking about, even if you are a Muslim. If you walk in an area the population are Muslims, the area will live like in the cave time. You go to a Christian area, you feel you think you are like in, in Europe. You go to a Jewish area, it's the same. So religion have a huge impact in you know how, how civil you will be. There's no question about that. Islam bring nothing but take you back on time. You see. Uh, if you ask yourself why country like Emirat is successful, the answer is very simple. There is no Islam. What is a Muslim in Emirat? Nothing. Women in the bikini in the beach, there is bars, uh, you know, do whatever you want. There is night club, uh, dancing, singers, parties, a Christmas light. Bring Islam, Emirat will be cave time country as simple as that actually the Muslims in Emirat are a minority they are little tiny minority the majority are Christians Hindus uh, there's Jews little number but the majority either Christians or Hindus or uh, you know from, from everywhere but the, the Muslims are and not only that you will not believe it if I tell you that those countries they prefer to bring Hindus or Christians over Muslims isn't it amazing there's a limit in Marat to take Muslims because Muslim they bring problems they don't trust them they don't they don't they don't bring them so what they do they try their best to have the majority either Indian Hindu Christians from India, from any country, but not 
Muslims. Because you bring a Muslim to live in your country, to work in your country, second day he will speak about it as if it's his own country and he wanna he wanna question the prince because he's a Muslim, man. This is a Muslim country, brother. This is a Muslim brother. This is a Muslim land. So they don't bring them. Uh <clears throat> No, no, this is for sure. I mean, I'm not, I'm not joking. We know uh, this is, this is the, this is the truth. If you are a Christian, you are welcome. They don't even investigate your background. If you are a Muslim, when you apply for a visa, they have to check which organization you join. They want to check your Facebook. They want to check, etc. Because God knows what are you. So they have a very limited number of Muslim workers to work in their countries. They don't trust them. If you are a Christian, just you go to the embassy, stamp you, go. That's it. You know, no worry. If you are Hindu, no problem. They do not need to do background check. They do not need etc. But if you are a Muslim, they want to see if you are a Muslim Brotherhood, if you are Al-Qaeda, if you are ISIS, if you are like all the garbage in the world is there. So what we, what we learn from this, that Muslims don't trust Muslims. Actually, if you ask Muslims, where is your money? They say to you in Switzerland, in USA, in England. It's, it's not in the Middle East. Nobody trusts the no, Muslims don't trust Muslims. Even, you know, me like, you know, as an individual, when I go to a Muslim house, I remember when I was in high school, I go to like, you know, you know, we are young youth. So a Muslim, he come to my house, I go to his house, etc. And, uh, you know, uh, when I go to his house, I sit with his sisters, his mom, and they are wearing very open clothing, you know, nobody hide. But if somebody, another student, you know, remember, I'm just a student like him in a school, we are in classroom. But if a Muslim, he knocked at the door, right away, all the sisters have to hide. His mother have to hide. When the coffee the coffee, he is the one who brings the coffee. If I am alone there, his mom brings the coffee, his sister brings the coffee, they sit with us, we talk, we have, etc. They ask me, like, how is your mom, etc. You know, as if I am one from the family. But if a Muslim, he come, he see none. Muslim don't trust Muslims. Immediately, they will hide their daughters, their women from Muslims. They trust only Christians. So, uh, <clears throat> Muslims, they love to live between Christians. They hate to live between Muslims. Muslims, they love to send their children to Christian schools. They don't like to send their children, if they can afford it, to Muslim schools. This is how it is. No, no, this is not about I'm a good guy or not. This is what they do for any, any Christian, any Christian. Because they know Christians, they are not going to look, you know, like, I mean, go inside the house and they do, uh, you know, you, you invite a Muslim to your house. He go inside, you see your sister wearing something short. He will go and he will he, he will make a scandal about it. I went inside and she showed me her legs and etc. For a Christians, you know, they are not, they, you know, they are used to be mixed with the, we don't have a taboo like them. You know, the taboo they have is, is a problem. For us as Middle Eastern Christians, it's not a big deal if I speak to a woman. For them, it's a big deal. So a Muslim, he come to your house. Just having your sister serving the coffee, he will make a story about it. He will make her a whore. You know, they gossip, they lies about what they saw inside. You know, they fabricate stories. This is why Muslims don't trust Muslims. You know, I sit with with the, with people from Saudi Arabia, uh, many families from Kuwait, from Bahrain, and I sit with their family, and they don't hide from me. But there is no way a Saudi will let another Saudi come inside the house and see his wife. It's impossible. They don't do that. All right. Anyway, going back to our topic. So what is behind this peace agreement? I believe this is not a peace agreement. It is an agreement between Trump and Netanyahu. It's a green light for Netanyahu to take over Jerusalem and make it final. This is the whole deal. It's not about 
any peace agreement. There's no peace agreement would happen. He is just saying to Netanyahu, don't hesitate. We have four years of me in the Kemen election. I want you to finish it before I go. Because the coming president of USA, most likely he will not be, I mean, after the coming four years, mostly he will be a Democrat. And Democrat, they are socialist. And socialist, they hate Israel. And you can, you know, if you listen carefully to the speech they made, you will understand that very, very clear. You know, the funny, a Muslim, he come and he talk about sexual predator. Mimi Hijab and Fifi, they were talking and approving about raping children. And your prophet is a child molester who have sex with a child she is six years old. And yet you are talking about sexual predator. Shame on you. Faith is come back like your prophet. Listen carefully, guys. BB, we have a lot of powerful people in this room, a lot of the people that can help make it work. So that's quite a thunderous applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will form a joint committee with Israel to convert the conceptual map into a more detailed and calibrated rendering so that recognition can be immediately achieved. Did you see? Recognition immediately achieved. They are not waiting for the other part to agree, not to agree. They knew they would not agree. Did you hear it? Did you, you know what I'm saying? The achievement is going to happen immediately, just about rendering the map. They are not waiting for the other party to sign, to shake hands. It doesn't matter. They shake hands or not. That is not really, it's not a problem. You know? They are not waiting for it. It's just an achievement it's America approving Israel to take what they have already, but to make it official, as simple as that. We will also work to create a contiguous territory within the future Palestinian state for when the conditions for statehood are met, including the firm rejection of terrorism. Under this vision, Jerusalem will remain Israel's undivided, very important, undivided capital. Uh, someone saying like the Lebanese right wing, like Samir Jaja is against this. You know, those people are doing politics. But in reality, Samir Jaja, if a war happened, Israel would support him. You see, you need to understand, there's things people, they see, they see in the stage, and there's some things they, they do behind the curtain. So the community now is against Israel. So if you are a politician, you can't say, go, I'm supporting Israel against, etc. I mean, no. But in reality, we knew who Samir Jaja support. Don't worry about it. But that's no big deal, because I've already done that for you, right? We've already done that, but that's okay. It's gonna. We already done that to you. What what he's talking about? He recognized Israel as the capital, uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and he moved the embassy. So this is not not a big deal, you know. We done that already. But now what we are doing? We are making it more official. We are making it a map. Remain that way. 
And the United States will recognize Israeli sovereignty over the territory that my vision provides to be part of the State of Israel. Very important. <laughs> and crucially, the proposed transition to a two-state solution will present no incremental security risk to the State of Israel whatsoever. We will not allow a return to the days of bloodshed, bus bombings, nightclub attacks, and relentless terror. Won't be allowed. Peace requires compromise, but we will never ask Israel to compromise its security. Can't do that. As everyone knows, I have done a lot for Israel, moving the United States Embassy to Jerusalem, recognizing <laughs> recognizing the Golan Heights, and frankly, perhaps most importantly, getting out of the terrible Iran nuclear deal. Yeah, exactly. You see, all of this is just for Israel. The Iran deal is for the benefit of Israel, 100%. Recognizing the Golan Heights is for Israel. Uh, moving the embassy to Jerusalem is for Israel. And nobody did really this to Israel as this man. So what this man is doing, he is telling them, I have this year and four year left. So you Jews, you better do it right, quickly. In those coming five years, we are going to do what you were not able to do in the last 50 years and I'm here to help you so this is the deal this is the deal there's no peace agreement because we knew they knew Benjamin Netanyahu he knew Trump he knew that the other side it doesn't matter what you do even if you take them to heaven they will complain so the deal is very simple just take it under the name of peace this is your land Take it, control it, and this way Israel will look like they are people of peace. They want peace, really. They are willing to compromise. And the Palestinians, they look like a bunch of idiots who they say no to anything. And actually, this is what happened. Right away, the stupid, who they call himself a president of the Palestinian, he cut relationship with Israel, he cut relationship with America. Okay, cut relationship. He looked like a, like a lizard who is upset because it is too cold. <laughs> standing alone in the rock <coughs> there's a lot of spirit in this room it's true. you don't see it often you don't see it often Therefore, it is only reasonable that I have to do a lot for the Palestinians or it just wouldn't be fair. Now, don't clap for them, okay? But it's true. It wouldn't be fair. I want this deal to be a great deal for the Palestinians. It has to be. Today's agreement is a historic opportunity for the Palestinians to finally achieve an independent state of their very own. After 70 years of little progress, this could be the last opportunity they will ever have, and last for a lot of reasons. We'll never have a team like we have right now. We have a team of people that love the United States, and they love Israel, and they're very smart and very, very committed. From your ambassador, David Friedman. <laughs> To Jason and Avi and Jared. You know, there is somebody making comment about the Jews. My friend, first of all, uh, I understand you are a Christian, but you have to understand too that Jerusalem is the capital of the Jews. It is not us, the Christians, who build Jerusalem. So forget about, you know, the Jews, they believe in Jesus, they don't believe in Jesus. That will not change the fact that your house is your house. 
just to make it simple for you you are a Christian and you've been asked to be a person of truth if I asked you according to the Bible that Jerusalem is the city of who what you will say you will say the city of the Jews this is Jerusalem the name itself is a Hebrew name so the Jews accept Jesus they don't accept Jesus that will not change the fact that this is their land and you as a Christian you are required to be truthful if a house belongs to a Muslim person not to a Jew I would say this house is a house for a Muslim I'm not going to side because of religion if a Christian want to steal the house of a Muslim person I would say to him no this is the house of the Muslim guy you are a thief so don't don't try to make the Jews guilty because they refuse Jesus that is something between them and the Lord their house is their house their city is their city their town is their town and you have no right to take side just because they don't accept the Messiah and just to let you know most of the Jews are coming to Christ actually there's a big movement in Israel tens of thousands of Jews coming to Christ as never before so don't you know don't compromise the teaching of Christ to fit with your propaganda or agenda you see Christ himself in the cross he said forgive them father they do not know what they are doing what you are saying don't forgive them father as if you are an antichrist if the Messiah himself in the cross he said forgive them father who are you who am I you see if I look at what the Messiah said in the cross as if he knew that one of us one day will come and say we should hate the Jews as Muslims they do today the Messiah he said that so he can mute you and silence you if you want to teach hate against the Jews you know what I mean and just remember that all the disciples of Jesus they were Jews so if not the Jews you yourself you will not even learn about the cross let us continue listen to this <clears throat> and they're all great deal makers and they also understand the other side and they want the other side to do well because that's the sign of a great deal and they understand that and I just appreciate all of the hard work you put in and so many of your other friends and of course our great Secretary of State Mike Pompeo <laughs> Okay, the rest is nothing, just to, you know, like clapping, hey, 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 like the Arab, you know, this is what we do. You know, in the Middle East, if you are a person, we want to be hypocrite to you, we just clap. It doesn't matter what you say because nobody is listening. Anyway, so this peace agreement is not a peace agreement. This is an agreement to give Israel the green light to take what they should take. As simple as that. So I'm not expecting much to happen. Uh, 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 but as usual, Muslims they get angry, they burn flag, you know, they dance in the street, and blah blah blah. blah. Talk, you know, talk is this is what they do. You know, they talk a lot. This is the nature. <clears throat> Does Jerusalem not belong to devoted Palestinian Christians? First of all, there is no Palestinian in the land. It's called Palestine. Even those who they are Christians, there they are Aramaic. Secondly, what the Palestinians have to do with Jerusalem? I mean, don't you know the Bible? Don't the Christian Palestinian read the Bible too? Does the Bible say that Jerusalem belonged to the Palestinian Christians? What's wrong with people? Where is the city of David? Where we can find the city of David? Where we can find the temple? I mean, what's wrong with people? Why? Why? You know, you see. Sometimes we are acting like Muslims just because there's a Christians and we are Christians. We have to side with the Christians against uh, somebody. No, we don't do that. Jerusalem belonged to the Jews. And as long as the Jews, they will not oppress the Christians and our holy sites are protected. I have no problem with the Jews taking over the city because this is their city. This is their city. The Bible says so. Even the Quran says so. Anyone he tried to change history is a liar.
as simple as that actually if I am a Jew I should take half of the Kaaba isn't it the Muslim they say that the one who built the Kaaba is Abraham <laughs> well if I am a Jew Abraham is my grandfather <laughs> I have 50 percent so the Jews they should do this they should ask for the Kaaba and they will rent it to the Muslims 50 percent we will rent it to you the Jews they will you know they want to make money so okay 50 percent of the Kaaba uh, for us okay we will rent it for you one million dollars an hour you know uh, <clears throat> as I said the problem is there is no real leaders this is all is politics this is all it's just politics and politics is like instead of saying to the Jews this is your land take it forget about those people you know you have to make it like as if it's a peace process and we want to shake hands with you but we knew that the other side they, they, they are full of hatred and they will not accept peace doesn't matter what you do but we have to make it look like a sweet cake but the fact is not you know what I mean read Zechariah 12 16 all right my friend read the whole Bible not only Zechariah why you want to read only Zechariah? Why people only want to read a verse to prove a point? It's a book. It's not a verse. Usually, many, uh, even Christians, if they want to prove something, they quote a verse and okay that verse fit with this incident so we try to make it for it the whole bible say clearly in zechariah you see what's happening now zechariah 12 1 6 okay so you know i will go with you the witnesses but just i want to take you uh, i want to i want to take your attention please you know i respect the opinion of people who says this verse is about what's happening today and this verse was about etc so that is like a prophecy right but you might say the same thing about something will happen tomorrow too how many people before you they say the same thing about the same verse many times what happened always usually we try to match between things being said in the Bible and things happening around us, even if this prophecy happened already a long time ago. But the verse you are mentioning is absolutely accurate for all the time. Because Jerusalem is going to be a capital where many nations will be fighting over it. And, you know, for me, it's not only one verse will prove a point. The whole Bible is proving the same point. Isn't it the Bible says that I will gather you from everywhere? It's amazing. I mean, the Bible is an amazing book. It's not just a one verse. You know, read the whole book. Speaking about everything happened and everything will happen. Uh, but for us, we discuss mostly in this scenario here, the politics they do, not the plan of God. You see, actually, uh, what people are doing right now is not the plan of God. What people are doing right now is trying to be hypocrite to each other. So the Jews, they want to shake hands with the Palestinian Muslims, and the Muslims, they want to supposed to, they are people, everybody trying to say, I am, I am a person who want peace. But the fact, this is not true. Because simply peace is impossible between two religion who they oppose each other. This is not a peace about the land. This is a, power, a peace about religion. And Muhammad, he made it clear, especially for the Jews, that Muslims, they should kill every single Jew in the world. 
as you see in the front of you. So both sides, they understand that this piece is a joke. It's a lie. And even if we sign it, it's going to be temporarily. The Quran says, Cry not for peace when you are the uppermost. What does that mean? Well, if you are the uppermost, don't go for peace. As simple as that. So if you are not the uppermost, sign peace agreement temporarily. Let us see the verse in the Quran. So Egypt signed peace with Israel. But is that true? No, it's a false peace. Absolutely false peace agreement. It's a piece of paper. As soon the Muslims in Egypt, they can destroy Israel, they will go for a war. As simple as that. Actually, the president of Egypt just three days ago, he said, once we destroyed the, the borders of Israel and we can do it again. This is just two days ago. So be not weak and ask for peace. What does that mean? That means the one who asks for peace in Islam is weak. Is not the teaching of Islam. Islam does not teach you to go for peace. It's a it's a peace, it's in a peace is an is a weakness with the enemy of Islam. And the Jews are the most ugly enemy for Islam, according to Muhammad. While you have in the upper hand, it's forbidden. And this is why the Muslims they say, okay, well, we are forbidden to have peace when we have the upper hand. But if we don't have the upper hand, we can sign peace. And this is what Muhammad did. He signed peace agreement with the Jews and later he killed them all. He signed peace agreement with the uh, with the Arab and later he killed them all. Muhammad is the best person to sign peace agreement only when he is weak. So the Jews, they should understand and the Christians too. Imagine if Erdogan, he have an army, can take over Europe. They did that before, they would do it again. What is preventing the Turkish from taking over Europe? They don't have the power. As simple as that. Otherwise, the Turkish, they will swallow you. The same as they took Romania, Bulgaria. I mean, oh, I mean they took most of Europe, actually. Why, why Turkey is not attacking Europe no more? Because they are weak. Otherwise, they will eat you alive. As simple as that. Jack Sparrow he is saying to us that those who they are the friend of Allah, uh, Allah, you know, there is no, there is no sad for them. Okay, uh, live with it. Say that to people in Somalia and people in Yemen, they are dying. People in Syria, people in Iraq. Where is your Allah? Hmm? Where is your Allah? It's the Red Cross is feeding them. Your Allah never appeared there. Yeah, the Turkish, you know, the Turkish, if they can, if they, if, the only reasons they are not invading you, they are weak. As simple as that. There's a Muslim sheikh from Egypt. He said, why you are poor? Why we are poor? Because we stop uh, attacking the Christians. He said, do you know how rich Europe is? Do you know how much money we can make from attacking them and bringing those blonde women and selling them in the market? <laughs> in TV. This is now. This is not in the in the in the past 10th century. This is now. He's saying we are we are poor because we stop doing jihad. Right. So anyway, I hope that uh, the way I I presented this uh, peace agreement is uh, clear to people. I hope we understand it. <clears throat> uh, for me, I believe that Israel should not compromise. This is why I don't agree with this. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I hope that this is not an agreement will happen. It will happen ever. 
because if this agreement really happened it's for the benefit of the Palestinian too the Muslims they should not compromise somebody is saying to me can you uh, explain mark uh, 11 uh, see you know the uh, everything the Messiah he do he do he do it to teach us so in this uh, in this verses uh, the Messiah he showed us his power that he can cast anyone anything into hell he have the power to stop a tree who have very strong roots to live which means the tree died immediately and then there the Messiah he taught us that you cannot have an excuse saying I am a tree it's not my season yet that's why he said from their fruits you shall know them so and the Messiah he said the tree will not give good fruits will be cut off and throw in the hell fire so when you try to understand the verse in the Bible you have to connect all things together not just one thing nothing in the Bible is to tell a story it is to tell you a teaching not a story Jesus is not a story maker he was teaching you so time will come and you will be asked for your fruits and then you will say I have a green leaf but I have no fruits you will be cut off and you will be thrown in the hellfire the same as what happened to this tree did I explain it to you So excuses will not be accepted. You know, okay, you spend, you are 70 years old, 80 years old. And then what you will say to the Messiah, I was busy buying a house. What, what you did? Okay, I, I made you live 80 years. What you did in the 80 years? You did not even bring one person to Christ. You did not even explain the Bible for one person. What you did in 80 years? This is exactly what we are talking about. So a tree have leaves, green leaves, look healthy, but there's no fruit. So what what, what is it, what are you for? What what exactly your duty? What do you do? Do you understand? Somebody asking the Bible is changed. Is he a Muslim? Who is the one saying the Bible changed? Do you have the original Bible? <laughs> you know, one of the stupid things people they come with when they say to you the Bible changed. Okay, do you have the original copy to compare? Like, do you have your own copy? This is one of the stupid things Muslim they come with. Okay, the Bible changed. Do you have the Bible, the, which is true? So how you know it's changed? Because in order to know which one is true, which one is false, we have to compare. We have to have two books. Do you have the original book? They don't even have a single page of what they call a Bible. Stupidity. Right? Yeah, stupidity. Secondly, if, if the Bible changed, that means Muhammad is a fraud. Why? Because the Quran says that the one who sent the Bible is Allah. So what kind of Allah? A Jew, he spanked him and he changed his book. You see, the book belonged to who? To the author. Who is the author? God. Okay, wonderful. According to Islam, who is the one who sent the Bible? Allah. Which means who is the author? Allah. That's wonderful. So how this author, his name is Allah, but yet anyone can spank him and change his book? You tell me. That's when your God is a fraud. Because a God who cannot protect his book is a, is a, is a, is a potato God. So when a Muslim he say that, he is spanking his God, proving to us that the claim that the Bible is the book of Allah, it's impossible. Do you see it? This is what the Quran is saying. <clears throat> so
So when a Muslim he attacked the Bible, he is attacking himself. He is not attacking me. He's talking about his Bible, not me, not my Bible. You know, uh, some people, they say to you, Christians, they admit there is verses thrown out and added. No, my friend, there's nobody admit. You see, uh, 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 you, you, have, you, you have a problem. You will tell me, like, you know, I know some names who come with those claims. But they study only one Bible, which is the Latin. But the Bible is written in many languages. There's the Aramaic. There's the Hebrew. There is even the Ethiopian. There's the Coptic. And you will find that they are in total agreement. So when an idiot, he tried to come with an idea, says, in this copy, it is different here, the verse, we cannot find it there. Even if this is like in, in that copy he's talking about, right? Okay. He's trying to do it in an academic way. But it exists in different even language. So we are talking about a book aged more than 2,000 years. And every day we discover more document support what we have. Like uh, 50 years ago, let us say we used to have a 5,000 manuscript. The number now increased to be seven and eight thousand. The eight thousands did not make the book look bad, they make it even look better because they confirm what it was there and even make it more clear. So this is your understanding, not the truth. How the word of God edited? What do you mean? How come the word of God become a word? of edited that is stupid of you to say nobody edited but a book is written by hands if i show you your quran right now we will find your quran written in many ways as an example if we go to chapter one verse number uh, 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 six or seven let us go to the quran look at this do you see this word <clears throat> In different Quran, the word Sirat is appearing as Dhirat. Do you know what Dhirat mean? Or Dhirat mean fart. So look what happened. By having one dot, just one dot, here, the word Sirat became Dhirat, which means fart. So how this happened? The Muslim, they don't say this is a problem of writers because people, they are writing by hand. They say that the Quran was given to your prophet in seven letters. You can go and ask any, any, anyone who claimed to be a scholar. So if you go and read the Quran recited by Moroccan people, you will see that the word Surat is Durat. But Durat means farting. How the word Surat became Durat? Some they say even Dhurat, they don't even say Dhurat, they say Dhurat, al Dhurat al Mustaqim. You know, even my, my stomach is talking. <clears throat> uh, how you come, you do not notice the sheepy? What sheepy? What, what language this guy is using? What sheepy mean? Anyone understand what this guy is talking about? The sheepy? <laughs> the sheepy <laughs> no and we notice my friend we notice very well as, as I said it's a stupid of you to listen to people who say certain things and look what you said you said some Christians admit some Christians so you want to take the some Christian who admit not the some Christian who refuse that do you see how stupid you are some Christians so the Christian who don't don't agree with that you don't no, we throw them in the garbage but if there is a Christian agree this is the true Christian and obviously he is just being stupid yeah what is your religion mr. Uh, uh, what what is name sheepy stuff what's what's your what you are a Muslim right how come you don't want to answer me about your God sending the Bible and then the Bible is corrupt? Why your God cannot protect his book? 
Where's your God was? Hmm? Christians are afraid of truth. Well, we got you busted already, and we answered you, and you are the one who don't answer. Here we go. Let me let me block you because obviously you are a kid. I have no time for kids. Christians are afraid of the truth. Okay, you have the truth. We are afraid of it. What we can do? I mean, that's it. This is the end of the point. I'm I'm terrified because of you now. You know, let us say, let us say that those verses you are talking about are not exist, but that will not change anything. That Jesus is God. He made the dead alive. He said, "I am the Alpha. I am the Omega." I mean, if you take you see, if I take if I take one book out of the four, just to make you happy, still the three books witness that Jesus is your God and his shoes will be in the top of you in the judgment day and you will be punished for your lies. Are you happy? As simple as that. I will take one book just to make you happy. We have three books left. Hmm? Just to go with your stupid argument. Still the three books proven to us. You see, we have four witnesses, not one. And the four witnesses are in total agreement that the Messiah is Lord. And the four witnesses agree that the Messiah is alive. And the four witnesses agree that the Messiah, he have control of everything. So all your lies will not change anything. Let us say for the sake of argument, somebody added a verse. Uh, he added the verse according to you. This is not my statement. And you are saying that the rest are true there's a guy he he's, he's you know he uh, he made books against christianity he said there's no authentic book in the world authentic as much as the bible he is an antichrist person imagine he said the same one you are quoting from about there's verses are added or taken off the same person said there's no book is authentic as much as the bible What do you want more? The enemy of our book, they are witnessing that there's no authentic book exists in this earth. Have more support of evidence and manuscript as the Bible. In the same time, we cannot even find one page of the Quran. You know, when when the Muslim they found one page of the Quran in the in the University of like in in the UK, TV stations talking about it, and it's not the Quran. The leather which is written on is dated to the time of Muhammad, not the writing. One page, just one page, and it's not doesn't fit with the Quran today. The truth hurt, my friend. You know, if I ask you. The, you, are the, you are the one who complain about uh, a verse. Well, Aisha, she said that the chapter of the cow used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Ahzab. Do you dare to say Aisha is a fraud? That's mean there are more than a hundred verse, hundred ten verses, something like that, missing in one chapter alone. If I show you that your prophet a wife saying that a goat ate your Quran and you are talking about the Christian book you know you are exactly as the Messiah our Lord he said you see you know you you, you are like you notice the little thing in the eye of somebody but you don't see the big tree the big piece of wood in your eye you are blind do you see the goat eating your Quran not only the goat your Quran, the gate was the goat was in the top of your prophet because your prophet was sleeping in the pillow. The pillow in the top of the Quran. So in order for the goat to eat the Quran, let, let me draw it for you and let me use my skills. You know, I'm I'm very good in art. People they knew that, you know that, right? Okay. So this is the, the bed of Muhammad. Aisha she said, let me make it uh, more thin. This is the bed of your prophet. Hmm? You force me to use my art. I mean, what I can do, I like art. This is the bed of your prophet. This is the bed of Aisha. And your prophet, Muhammad, he is here. You know, this is his body. Let us make it in uh, uh, 
in a green because the hadith actually the blue because the hadith says his skin became a green and blue he was stinky I'm, I'm serious I'm not making things up he Anton you know Anton he stink his smell because they did not bury him for three nights you believe it they thought he's the same as a Christ so he is here the pillow is here this is the pillow underneath of his head okay the goat according to the story of Aisha she jump in the top of the bed okay let us get the goat this is mrs goat me hmm? this is the goat in the top of your prophet four legs but it's a nice goat by the way from a good family you know she is now in the top of your prophet and now she want to eat the quran how she can eat the quran the only way she is going to push muhammad from the bed and Muhammad will fall down in the floor. This is your prophet now in the floor. And now the goat is doing yummy, yummy, eating the Quran. Well, prove me wrong. This is exactly what the hadith is saying. Read carefully. The verse of a stoning and breastfeeding for adult, breastfeeding for adult. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? Teach that there is a guy he can suck a woman's breast and she is not his mom and he's a man. Yeah, ten time, ten time. And the stone into death was revealed, and the paper was under my pillow. When the messenger died, we were preoccupied with his death. A tam sheep ate it. Do you see it? And you are complaining about the book of the Christian. Go find the tam sheep. Uh, by the way, this time sheep, uh, you know, I have connection, as you know. You know, I have like a very strong connection with police and FBI. And, you know, so I was able actually uh, to get some information about this, uh, uh, this uh, sheep. Uh, let us see if I can share it with you. I don't know if I, the FBI will allow me. Uh, to share it uh, because you know it's like a secret information as you know um, <clears throat> I'm just asking for permission from the you know from Trump because you know this goat is wanted you know top wanted yeah here we go well <clears throat> I'm not sure I mean how this happened but it happened so if you have any clue or any glue let me know and you are complaining about the book of the Christians and what you will say there's a verse was added out of thousands this is what you are coming with when you have all your book is gone and by the way I'm really surprised that uh, goats are very, they like education, you know. I never thought that goats are, they like, they like to read and educate themselves. And actually, what happened as I, I think Aisha, she hides some story from us, some, some information. The goat, not only she ate the, the Quran, I think she went under the bed in the beginning and she started reading it. And then, because the Quran is delicious, it's coming from Allah, she decided to eat it. This is the bed of the Prophet. The goat, she went in the top of the bed, she flipped the Prophet, she got the Quran, she grabbed the Quran under the bed, and now she is reading it. And then she ate it. Meh. And you are complaining about the book of the Christians? Are you serious?
And by the way, this is a Muslim goat. She read, she drink coffee when she is reading, recite the Quran. Uh, just uh, black angel, just search for uh, a goat eating, uh, getting, uh, eat, sorry, reading book. Just search in Google, goat reading, reading book. <laughs> and yet they complain about the Bible, you will not believe it. <laughs> but look, they are serious. And when they read, I mean, those, those goats, when they read, really, they go like, a, they go deep, man. They go like, they really, literally, they want to eat the book because they are like in love with it. Hmm? And 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 the funny he says why the Christian they 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 fear the truth. <laughs> Look who is talking. <laughs> A religion who believe if somebody disagree with them we have to kill him and yet they are talking about the truth nice to meet you mr. truth actually I'm so upset from this goat because imagine if we still have those verses about the breastfeeding for adult 10 time that would be fun To be honest with you, I don't believe in this lie that the goat ate it. I think the Muslims ate it because it's embarrassing, it's a stupid, it's a proven Muhammad to be a fraud. I mean, because think about it. Okay, the goat ate the verse. How come no Muslim remember the verse? You know what I mean? Okay, the goat, she ate the verses. She did not eat the Muslims. Are, are we listening guys <laughs> so if the goat ate the Quran and she ate some of the Quran some verses okay but she did not eat the Abdul she ate the Quran what about the Abdul they didn't remember it don't the Muslim they say we recite the Quran by heart what is your heart now the, the, the goat ate your heart too And the funny here it says these verses were abrogated in recitation but not in ruling <laughs> okay well, hold on why are you abrogated in recitation but not by ruling i mean if you want to practice it <laughs> why you abrog why you why you dump it i mean have you ever heard of a, of of there's somebody have a law let us say a traffic light it says you have to stop when it is red now I'm going to erase this law but we have to practice it why I mean are you stupid or what we abrogated by recitation we're in the Quran it says this verse abrogated by recitation who told you that who is the one who made decision hmm if you cannot cure cancer and drink poison uh, here this is the same guy he changed his name and he came let me show you how stupid what you just said you just admitted that Jesus is God and you just admitted you, you see you're trying here to to make fun of Christianity hold on you just admitted that a fake Christian is a person who don't have the power of Jesus and the power of Jesus can heal cancer and if you drink poison nothing will affect you thank you very much for admitting that Jesus is God secondly you are so stupid at the point you think that if you are a Christian that's mean you can heal that's not true the Bible says your faith recover you the Messiah said clearly that there is from the people who they believe in him people who he gave them power they can do miracles not everybody not everyone secondly even those who do miracles in the name of the messiah doesn't make them true christians because the messiah said not everyone 
say Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will and then they will say well didn't we make miracles in your name he will say to them depart from me I do not know you so you are a stupid officially you do not know the Bible and you are a fake person you are a Muslim secondly about drinking poison nowhere in the Bible it says if you drink poison literally you will not die the Messiah himself he died so how that can be that's stupid of you to say because you are a stupid Abdul however the Quran says sorry Muhammad said if you eat seven ajwa no black magic will affect you and no poison can kill you yet he was affected by black magic and he died by poison you know when somebody bring to you those the verse about the poison the poison is the poison of this earth because we live inside the poison there's a lot of poison around us so no poison can affect you if you drink all the poison of the world because you are saved that's why the Messiah he said they can kill the body but they cannot kill your soul and the Messiah himself who is our Lord he himself he was killed get out of here shame on you why you don't use a Muslim name and come back you are you are, you are just a shame person you have no shame and look we got you busted and we answered you now let us see what Muhammad said about poison so we can love together you see all the disciple of Jesus they die is that correct guys and they get killed is that true which means death will affect us actually Jesus said time will come and they will be killing you and they will think by killing you they are doing favor to God so the Messiah he confirmed that we will be slaughtered not only they will die that is showing how stupid you are so speaking about poison Jesus not saying they cannot kill you he is saying the opposite the Bible doesn't say that you are a superman who nobody can shoot you it's the opposite because Jesus the Messiah himself he bleed on the cross so you are coming with teaching is not exist in the Bible this is your own interpretation because you are a potato now let us see Muhammad this is your prophet read and love and this is meant literally <laughs> literally <laughs> he who ate seven ajwa of date palm tree fruits every morning will not be affected by poison or magic how Muhammad he died he died by poison like a rat rat poison actually do you see it where is the seven ajwa Muhammad he eats seven ajwa every morning not only that Muhammad he was affected by black magic according to Muslims not according to me do you see it once the Prophet was bewitched potato the truth hurt my friend you know when somebody come to you with the verses about uh, poison did, didn't uh, Satan he said to Jesus throw yourself if you are son of God what Jesus said anyone remember what Jesus said to him when he said if you are son of God the angels will carry you you know he said don't try your Lord don't try so there is nowhere in the Bible it says try your Lord so like you go and you take a poison see if God will save me or not that is even against Christianity teaching never try your Lord you are a fraud my friend and we spank you come back with different name and here we go you have a bewitched prophet bewitched prophet nice to meet you what bewitch mean that means Muhammad he lost his mind in the best scenario Muhammad have a demon inside him this is what the Muslims are saying to us in the best scenario this is from their mouth this is their translation this is Aisha the first witness the first victim of Muhammad the child wife saying that for sure when she said that she was a lady she is not a child do you see it Abdul a bewitched prophet this is what you are following a bewitched man we'll have fun with the bewitched man you know if I say to Muhammadan your prophet is bewitched he will be insulted he will say you are offending me 
It's you who says that. <laughs> it's you, not me. <laughs> try it, try it. Just to say to a Muhammadan, oh, you are a person who followed the bewitched prophet, he will be upset. Why you are saying that? Why you are saying the prophet was bewitched prophet? It's you who says that. It's, it's you. It's you Muslims who tell us that your prophet was bewitched. There's a video, if you remember, there's a guy who called me. He was not supposed to get me busted. He is from the, you know, the friend of Fifi. So he told us in the video, we have it in Patreon, you can watch it, uh, that a Jewish guy, he made it 12 knots, 11, 11 knots for the prophet. 11. 11 what? Knots. And took Allah one year to take the black magic from Muhammad. Look how slow Allah is. One year to open a living knot. That's not, <laughs> not good. <laughs> and then the prophet, not only he was bewitched, he was having a, a sexual fantasy. Look at this. The prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he had boom, boom. In fact, he did not. Look, what the heck? I hope the goat is not involved in this story. The prophet, he imagined himself doing boom, boom. In fact, he did not. So what he was doing, it do with who? He was taking a flower to the bedroom of the goat, thinking that this is Aisha. He went to the goat. And he starts singing for her. Do you love me? Do you? Do you? <laughs> and the goat, she said, nah, you sure? <laughs> I mean, how in the world this man can be a prophet if he is imagining himself having sex? So, which means even his sex have no witnesses. Nobody there. Actually, I wish there was a video camera recording Muhammad at, that, and, and, at this time. He's having sex, but there's nobody. Use your imagination. He's having sex, but there's nobody there. He was holding the goat from the front or from behind. Who was with him? Was it a legal marriage or it was a uh, muta? Oh boy, I mean, your, your book is supplying us with a lot of information, too much information. Too much information, right? Anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe. I think we have enough for today. Did we have a good time? Tomorrow is Sunday. Ah, you see, guys, I did not update you about my fishing trip. Man, the fish was all over. I mean, I just, I went there. I, I posted a picture in uh, uh, for the beach. It was very cloudy. I got 99 fish. True story. Do I need witnesses? No. No. <laughs> Nine, guys, I mean, I don't know why the number stopped with 99, but it happened all the time. It happened all the time, brother. 99. This guy here is talking about women, by the way. He's, he, he, the Quran called women goats. You see it? I'm not, this is not me. The Quran called women goats. This is the Quran. <clears throat> Not even one fish said hello to me. Not even one. Like I was like, come on, come over. I mean, come on, let me take a picture for you. At least, okay, what about you? Come from the water just for five minutes, just for a minute. Act that you are being fished by Christian Prince. I will take a selfie for you and I will put you back. I promise. Come on, fish. Nobody coming. <laughs> 
yeah actually it's it's not a season yet because still the water is not really too much warm so you need to wait a little bit of time i hope maybe next week is going to be better yeah not even one fish man not even one but the, the ocean is so beautiful i love it very beautiful very peaceful god god is amazing you know god who created this ocean i mean it's really the cloud I, I i posted the picture in patreon i don't know how many of you saw it actually there's somebody who said the beach is not beautiful are you serious i mean this beach is amazing man the sand is white like sugar clean the water is so clean and you are saying it's not beautiful maybe because it's not sunny so he did not see it very well <clears throat> Will you let Christians call into your awesome fun show? My friend, we don't have a show here. We have we are a family. This is not a show. We are family. Those are my brothers and my sisters. I'm no one. I'm just one of them. This is not a show. And uh, people want to call me for sure. But now you see, it's already, uh, it's very late. We pass the middle of the night. So uh, maybe tomorrow, if we do it in the daytime, people, they can call us you know do you see <clears throat> did you become a pig now why because you heard my stomach so what <laughs> uh, weird people very weird <clears throat> uh, here we are not doing a show here we are family we meet together from around the world we are a christian family the lord the messiah is our savior and he is our lord so uh, you know we enjoy our time together we refute the muhammadan we speak about many topics but we are not doing a show absolutely we are just a family <clears throat> as simple as that Uh, uh, fishing on Saturday. Ah, oh, okay. I will get Lewis Farrakhan next time if I go. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, uh, for me, uh, 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 for sure, I love to get fish, but I love the ocean, man. Sitting just there, it is so beautiful. And, uh, you know, fishing is, uh, you know, it teaches you patience. Uh, never give up you know if you watch videos on YouTube about people doing fishing so you will see in 15 minutes the guy he got like 10 fish but this is not really true I mean this guy he spent the whole day standing in the sun and those 10 fish come this <laughs> it's not what you think so uh, uh, fishing is really a very good hobby I encourage people encourage people to do it because it teach you patient it teach you to hold yourself and not to be a rush um, uh, I, I did not even stay long actually because it's getting uh, uh, the cloud became so strong and I was uh, afraid I don't have any coat I'm not wearing any thing to protect me from rain so I decided I said okay you know what I better go better than getting sick uh, <clears throat> I shall invite my video my admins to fishing they are invited but they are you know most of my admins they are from china <laughs> nobody is nobody is welcoming them <laughs> actually the funny is i check i check uh, 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 airlines to go to different countries i found that this is the best time to fly tickets are so cheap and i'm sure if you go in airplane it's going to be empty i mean this is really the best time to go no, there was no rainbow. <clears throat> All right? Yeah. Uh, destroy CP. Muslims over destroyed me. And this is why I bought a lot of glue from Amazon. You know, the Muslim they destroy me, I destroy Muhammad. Let us see who is the winner. <laughs> and brother, I, yes, I, I agree. They destroy, you Muslim destroyed me to the point I imagine myself having sex, but in fact, I was not. I mean, do you believe what happened to me now? Are you there, Mr. Uh, Truth? Look what happened to me. I'm being honest with you, brother. 
I continue for such and such period imagine that I had sex boom boom with Aisha but in fact it was not Aisha it was the goat so this is just to explain to you how bad the situation is very bad I mean this is what happened when you are destroyed you think you are with your wife it turned to be the goat what you can do brother do you think I have hope <laughs> the funny the funny by the way the most time they say if you read the chapter of the chair that will stop the magic okay why Muhammad did not read the chapter of the chair and the couch and the chapter of the zucchini and the fukini and the tutini why he did not stop the magic for himself your Quran doesn't work hmm? chapter of the chair your Muhammad he you know according to you Muslims some you know like the guy who called me last time he said the Prophet was possessed for or under black magic for a year where is the Quran if you banned all the Abdul you cannot have a debate they are not debating they are just coming here to call names do you see anyone debating us Mimi Bibi do you see debaters here they are just coming you are destroyed you know where's the debate she is worried about debaters we stay online for 10 hours keep saying who wanna call me and not even one of them call and then she is worried about a guy saying you are destroyed very weird people <clears throat> But anyway, I have to agree that, you know, the Muslims, they are destroying me always. And I continue for such and such a time. You know, actually, I don't think I'm single. I think I'm married. But I'm in the, st right now, I am in the stage of imagining myself <laughs> to be, <laughs> to be married. I mean, <laughs> to be single. <laughs> I mean, look what they are <laughs> And like, brother, brother, look at this. And in fact, he did not. Like what? He did not what? He did not do intercourse? So what he was doing? He was molesting his umbrella? I challenge any Muslim to tell me what he was doing. Okay. She is saying he imagined himself having sex. But in fact, he did not. Okay, hold on. Who is a Muslim is willing to explain to us what was happening exactly in details? He was holding what exactly? Hello? We are talking about intercourse. So Muhammad was doing something there. He, he have intercourse, literally. But it's not with his wives. It was with what? Hmm? I don't know. <clears throat> you know, and look, Muhammad, he found a solution. Two angels, they came to him. Three angels, actually. There come to me two men here in the story. One of them, he sat near my feet, and the other one, near my head exactly as they do it in the surgery room man look at this the one near my feet asked the other one near my head pointing at me as but he is the only one there why he's pointing <laughs> i mean two angels coming from the behind the seven galaxies and one of them is pointing what's wrong with this guy huh what's wrong what's wrong with the guy the other one he said to him the later replied, he is under the effect of magic. If, 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 true story. The first one asked, who had worked magic on him? The other guy, he have all the information. The one in the left is an idiot. He's a stupid. You know what I mean? The one in the top of the head of Muhammad, sitting in the top of his head, is the smart guy. He have all the information. The other guy is like a taxi driver, maybe. 
he's the one who like gave the angel a ride or maybe you know like he is abdul who work for uh, uh uber 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 whatever they call it the other replied his name is lubaydum he have his name unbelievable lubaydum asam shame on you you idiot why you don't use nicknames so they will not know who you are call yourself christian prince call yourself something why you give them your name now they know you the first one asked what material did he use material man there is chemical here involved you see here chemistry and physics quantum physics material so in order to control muhammad you have to use material <clears throat> hold on all right material i like the material thing here material right hmm. I was going to leave. I mean, you believe what they did to me. Material. I will give you just an example about the material, brother. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, that's the cause you must have to get out of the radio. What is that? They control your profit by material. Is that Muhammad in there? The Jewish guy, he got the Barbie of Muhammad and he was pushing needles in his... <clears throat> Hello? Material? Are you sure? Mm, look how cute. I mean, what a stupid religion. And yet they destroy Christian, I mean, obviously Christian prince is destroyed. Not their prophet who is under black magic, it's me. <laughs> Look what happened to Muhammad here. Oh boy. Look at this. Man, that is a mascara. Oh boy. Man, man, man. man. Oof. It's not easy. It's not easy to be a prophet. Not easy. <clears throat> this is the garbage you have in your books and you think you can destroy us? I mean, look, any stories of those stories is enough to make everybody laugh at you and your religion and your God and your prophet. Your prophet was controlled by voodoo. Voodoo, voodoo. Look what happened to Muhammad here. Look what happened here. This is after the voodoo. This is taking effect. This is Muhammad here. Imagine himself having sex. Look, where is his hand? Oh boy. His hand is inside his pant, I think. I don't know. Do you see, guys, where his hand is? <clears throat> oh boy. Let us not go there. Look at this. This is the Jewish guy. Now we know who did it. Oh boy. Pfft. Things is really getting horrible. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this is this is Ed the bear. Look at this one. <laughs> <coughs> I 
uh, uh, Draco, I apologize, my friend. It's really late. Maybe tomorrow we go live on air in the daytime. You can call me. It's really late now. It's like, you know, we see we are. Uh, it's maybe for you it's daytime. But for me, it's really late. You see, I did not open my Skype. Anyway, you know, when the, when the Muslims, the Muslims always they destroy anyone who speak against Islam. I mean, that's it. They are destroyed. What you can do? What you can do? That's it. They destroy you. You know? Yep. Yeah. True story. <clears throat> Voodoo. Yeah, don't remind me of the surgery now. This, this is a different topic. Come on. Yeah, we shall maybe we shall talk about the surgery tomorrow because too much comedy is not good. Oh man. Actually once I was in the in the in the Philippines and there was a store have voodoo. And I entered the store, he said, uh, he said, How I can help you? I said, How you can help me? What do you mean? He said, we have uh, material for your mother-in-law. <laughs> I said to him, I don't have one. I killed her already. He said, oh, okay. He looked at me seriously. You think I'm serious? And then he said, well, if you like, there is a girl, she love you. And, uh, uh, you, sh you know, you love her. She is not, uh, she don't care. We can give you something to make her love you. I said, no, I don't like girls to love me, actually. Uh, then he said, oh, well, Oh, I said, no, no, don't think, don't go there. <laughs> don't think there. I said, I don't like girls to, 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 to love me, but I mean everything. <laughs> yeah, this is how they fool people, you know? Like your mother-in-law, you don't want her to visit you. She is bothering you. We can give you things to stop her. If there's a girl, she, you know, you like her. She don't care for you. We can make her love you. And there's many fools they feel into this garbage. There's many stupid people they feel into it, you know? yeah you know you Muslims as long as you can do black magic and etc why you don't control Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu control the world my friend by black magic what's wrong with you <clears throat> oh boy yeah actually those stores they make a lot of money there's a lot of uh, naive people all, all over they believe in this garbage you know Like now, you can go and buy uh, one Barbie from those stores. You, you Muslims, I have an idea for you. Why you don't get a Barbie from those stores for a Christian prince? And then you bring needle and like, ah, ah, it hurt. What do you think? Each time I try to talk about your prophet, you hit the needle. What do you say? <clears throat> Muhammad was uh, bewitched before the surgery or after? <laughs> after, after the surgery. <coughs> after the surgery yeah but you know people they believe in this garbage you know they, they do you see there is there you know there is even Christians who they are Christians who go to church they believe in this garbage <coughs> now there is some countries they are really obsessed with magic they believe in it like if you go to Romania, if a woman, she want to marry a man, she like him. So they, they try to put something in his drink, you know? So like there is a, 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 you know, even some, they are supposed to be educated, but still they are living in the cave time stories. You know? <clears throat> Look like until now, no woman she was able to put something in my drink, <laughs> and this is why I don't go and drink in restaurants, and uh, I eat at home to be safe and secure. You don't want to go and drink uh, something, and you know they put something for you, and then you find yourself marrying a woman you do not know. Hello, and then what would happen next? You know what would happen next after this? You imagine yourself having intercourse, but the fact it not, she is not your wife. She is the pillow. <laughs> <coughs> uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, those fake stories always is used to control the naive and educated people. In old days, uh, you know, those who do bewitches, uh, business, etc., they take advantage of villagers, poor people. They suck their blood, their money. They promise them that they can have solution for their life. And they give them a stupid paper, put it in the drink of your husband, or so, you know, blah, blah, blah. They write words nobody understands, supposedly. And those supposedly are magic. They will do a lot of things for you. And, you know, it's a scam. It's a big scam. And many people they feel into that scam and until now people believe in it how many how many of you here believe in what it's called zodiac how many of you believe in that zodiac thing let us see how many how many of you listen to the zodiac news about which month you are born and what will happen to you today how many Come on, from, from 700 people, nobody believe in it? There's no way. There's many people believe in it. Yeah, horoscope, yeah, horoscope. Maybe I'm saying the word wrong. <clears throat> A lot of people, they are attached to their things and they believe in it. Today, when you are going to work, you are going to meet someone. <laughs> oh, <boy. coughs> yeah. Um. You know, it's uh, depend how how uh, how much educated you are, how smart you are, how naive you are. You know, people they can control your mind by stupid things. All right, Islam is no different. Islam is based on superstition stuff. If you if you lift your head before the Imam, Allah will make your head the head of a donkey. I mean, have you ever heard of a prophet? He said he says such a thing. What a stupid prophet. Just because the guy, he left his head before the Imam finished the prayer. The Imam means the leader of the prayer. Allah will make his head the head of a donkey. Why not, why not the head of a cow? <laughs> I mean, what's wrong? Why, why, why do you focus on the donkey? Huh? <clears throat> Why Allah will make your head the head of a donkey? What what is exactly the problem with the donkey? What about the head of a, of a cockroach? <laughs> Unbelievable! <coughs> uh, <laughs> and you know, and today, by the way, I went fishing on Saturday. You remember the Quran, right? Uh, if you do fishing on Saturday, Allah will curse you, make you a pig and a monkey. Until now, nothing happened. And we are turning to, we are already in Sunday. How come Allah did not do anything to me? I did fishing on Saturday, brother. Hello? You know what? I, I think it's not working because we are Middle East and we are very hairy. So already we are monkeys. <laughs> You go to the swimming pool if you are Middle Eastern. The guy in the swimming pool, he says to you, Sir, you cannot jump in the water wearing your clothes. You look at him, I'm not wearing my clothes. This is my hair. Hello? I'm a Middle Eastern. We are covered by hair. Uh, okay, sir, sorry. Uh, from far away, you look like you are wearing very heavy coat. I, I thought this is a fur of a bear or something. Oh, no. You know, we are the one... Darwin, he used us to prove his theory. <clears throat> yeah. Why you people are laughing? Why people? <laughs> show respect, show respect. Okay. What if, what, okay, hold on. What if now 
Uh, you make fun of me because I'm Middle Eastern. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Because we, uh, I'm hairy. Okay, no, no problem, no problem, no problem, brother and sister, brother. What if you? What if? What if Allah He curse you? He make you look like me? You believe it? I mean, that's unbelievable. That will be a very, very good punishment for you. <clears throat> oh boy. This is a true story, by the way. There's once a, a guy, he made fun of a Christian prince, how he looked like, and he woke up in the morning, he found himself look like him. Unbelievable. He hate myself. He, he jumped from the top of the mountain. I can show you the hadith. <clears throat> yeah. No, we are really, we are hairy. We are very hairy. You know, I shave my, my, I shave my beard. I just took a shower two hours ago. I can feel the hair is growing again. You believe it? The poor, the poor Zach and Nag, he spent his life to grow little hair in his beard. I mean, I wish I can help him. I shave it. I shave it at night. I woke up in the morning. I have a beard again. And not only that, it's very hard to shave. This is why I shave in the shower. You know, if you try to shave it not in the shower, it really hurt. Because the hair is so strong, it's like it's not a hair actually; it's a grass. <laughs> what hair? This is not hair. <laughs> it's like a knife. <laughs> we are lucky. What I can do? Unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah. Make you look manly? Well, a princess, if you want, I can give you as much as you want hair to look manly. Thank you very much. I don't want to look manly. I mean, <laughs> if the hair will make me manly, I don't want it. I mean, it's really very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult task, you know, because, I mean, if you, if you, if you ask yourself, how many times I shaved uh, in the last 10 years? Unbelievable. This is why Asian people they are lucky. They don't have a beard. You know. It's yeah, it's a jungle, yeah. But you know, to be honest with you, there's a benefit of this beard. You know, if you remember Mimi Hijab is in this stage and he's debating debating David Wood and he got a camp and he started camping his beard. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was stupid. I mean, this guy is in the stage. There's a camera. There's hundreds of people watching, and now he's camping his beard. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, dummy people. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. He think he think he have a hail. Uh, he have a, a horse tail. Oh boy. But it's useful, you know, sometimes you don't have a towel, you want to dry your hands, etc. It can be useful. Right? Hey Phoebe, how are you? Yeah, what a lovely family, man. What we can do. Uh, okay, guys, uh, anything else? You, you, are we done for today? Uh, I love to hear you laughing, but when you are angry because of a stupid people. So you like me to get angry, so you can enjoy. I mean, look at this. Look at this, how selfish you are. You are very selfish. So you like me to be angry, so I can laugh at the way people, and then you enjoy it. Oh, he boy. Unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. No, actually, honestly, the uh, Asian, they are very lucky. They don't have hair like us. You know, it's too much. And actually, I am not really compared. There is some Middle Eastern. They are literally, literally like bears, you know. I mean, hair grow everywhere, not only in their beard, which is not really nice. Uh, Daniel is saying the same. He is American, Native American. He don't have a beard. Yeah, it's good for you, actually. You know, it might be like, you know, for some people they care for, maybe he will think he look good with a beard or etc. But it's not a practical. Same time, it's too much work, especially if it's going to grow very fast. I, I like, I, I wish there is a... Do you think Cameron Urine can fix that? 
So if we like a drink camel urine, that will slow the beard from growing. <laughs> <coughs> hey city how are you how is the philippine doing take care of yourself my friend <clears throat> be careful with the coronavirus you see that the philippine is a very crowded country and i hope that the virus will not spread all over because that can cause a disaster in, in country like the philippine <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, what lucky you don't know I am catfish only at night lift only Christian Lim I have no idea what you just said this is sound like Quran for me honestly I'm trying to read your words I cannot understand anything uh, we are addicted to you <clears throat> thank you Phoebe I do my best all of you all of you here you are part of the team <clears throat> all of you uh, <clears throat> it is not that CP it is different CP newspaper not say it's CP. <laughs> what is that <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think this uh, <clears throat> this virus. I think they will be able to fight it, but it looked like it's not really that much dangerous. I mean, it's not everyone infected with it will die. So, like, there is a small percentage of people who may look like their 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 immune system is very weak, and this is the one is killing them. Um, but look like you know you have to take care. Like, if you go out. Uh, don't put your hand don't touch your mouth um, you know don't eat with your fingers outside touching people avoid simply avoid your hands touching people and putting it in your lips or whatever you know just wash your hands carefully after you shake hands with people and even maybe avoid shaking hands <clears throat> uh, should the Christian man remain completely abstain and single bachelor? You know, this is you see, this is a call from the Lord. <clears throat> if the Lord call you to serve Him to be and to be single, you do it this way. But it's not necessarily. Actually, I believe it's better for a man, uh, unless unless you are a missionary who's going from country to country, etc., like the disciples. But if you are a normal person who want to serve the Lord, it's better if you serve Him and you are married. You know. Because merit can can protect you from sin, you know. Man can be tempted by women; it's not a secret. And it doesn't matter how you try; still, you can be tempted. So, having a wife, being married, can protect you from temptation. And as long you are living in a, I mean, you are not a disciple who, let us say, a missionary who is going to to go between villages and mountains, etc. So that's it. You get married. Why not? No. <clears throat> but if you are a person who is going to spend his life as a missionary you know it's not good to have a family because your heart cannot be in two places you have kids to take care of them you have a wife so then you go you travel and you don't care about what will happen to you for me you know people ask me don't you like to get married i love to get married but where i mean how who i don't know you see it's not it's not easy to find someone can fit with someone like me i have uh, i have a lot of enemies <clears throat> my life is uh, can be in danger you know and uh, a woman she will marry me she have to accept uh, all terms and conditions you know what i mean <clears throat> how old are you uh, i'm very old you know i was born before that abdul his head became a head of a donkey <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what about when you have a bad marriage you see i believe there's nothing is called bad marriage i think there's bad spouse which mean you and your spouse you are doing bad stuff and that end into do to be a bad marriage uh, 
So uh, always we blame, we blame it in a bad marriage. But it's you who make it a bad. I mean, you say, okay, when you marry this woman or you marry this man, didn't you know him? Didn't you? Aren't you aware who is he, who is she? You were in love mostly with that person, right? So what happened? Obviously, you could not maintain that love. <clears throat> You could not maintain it. You could not make it a grow good. And then we blame it in the other person. It might be sometime the other person, yes, not always. But you are part of this failure. Don't take yourself out of it. However, I encourage you as a Christian to fight divorce. Divorce is not good. It's not healthy. Especially if you have kids. It's really a disaster, you know. Uh, emotionally, emotionally, um, um, for children's, uh, even you know, financially, I mean, everything will be ruined. Fight it. <clears throat> Don't get married unless you are really sure. And this is why it's better to be engaged for some time, not a week, two weeks, three weeks, five weeks. You know, take your time. Because we are Christians. We are not Muslims who get married and divorce, get married and divorce, get married and divorce. It's not a joke. Right? So you need to take your time and put, put the one you want to marry from into test. And let the one who want to marry you put you into test too. Allow that to happen. So the real you and the real her would appear, would be there. What happens usually, that people when they are in the process of uh, love, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, uh, even if you call her a monkey, she will say, okay, honey. Right? Because she's in love. But later... If you say the word monkey, she will beat you with her shoe. Because love is like now is flying. <clears throat> so what happens usually, when people are in the beginning of a relationship, um, it doesn't matter what you do, you are perfect. You are wonderful. You are amazing. Same for the girl, you know. She is. She don't wash dishes, it's okay with you. You know, she don't cook. Who care? We eat in the restaurant. Who care? Yeah. She don't do laundry. I would do laundry. But later after marriage, you start complaining about every single one of those. So you have to be smart and you have to be legitimate with yourself. Don't be a fool. Don't be like a, a immature person, a teenage who think less than what he do. You know? Uh, most of people when they get married they are immature you know they don't see they don't really think deep and even when they talk before marriage what is the color you like I like a blue color I like it too <laughs> what a conversation <laughs> And then if she like the music you like and you like the color you she like and you like the food she like and you liked it that's it that's now we are we are we are a perfect match you know so mostly there is immature couple are going to make an immature decision because they never have a deep real conversation reality check because life is reality it's not a fantasy they, those people, they live a fantasy more than reality. So when the reality come later, the fantasy die. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, you know, like they ask uh, themselves questions. You know, I remember once a, a cousin of mine, uh, she went uh, uh, like she wanted to introduce me to a girl. So the girl, she, I don't know, like their plan. I have no idea what they are doing. But anyway. So uh, she called me and she said, are you busy? Can you come over? I said, okay, where are you now? Uh, you know, my cousin. <clears throat> and then suddenly she have her friend come in and suddenly my cousin, she remembered that she have to go. Suddenly, you know. Okay. So this girl now, she's sitting with me at the table drinking uh, uh, coffee and she asked me, so what uh, singer you like? I said, I don't really like any what uh, actor you like most i said i don't know any 
uh, she anything she asked me it's about art singers I don't know I don't even I'm, I'm serious I do not know their names you know I like the only uh, actors I know is Sylvester Stallone I used to watch his movie when I was a kid <laughs> I have no idea so then this girl she told my cousin look like your cousin he hate me any question I ask him he don't know he don't know she said to her what you ask him about she told her, I asked him about um, music, singers, uh, actors. He keeps saying, I don't know. He said, yeah, he don't know. This is for real. He don't know. <laughs> you are asking him the wrong questions. <laughs> so, yeah, for her, she thought, like, I'm trying to be rude with her. I'm trying to get rid of her because I don't know. You know? But this is an example about how people, they try to find out who are you by asking you about a singer what song you like what music you like what color you like you know so uh, uh, many silly questions <clears throat> make you look bad supposedly for that person because obviously you are ignorant you do not know even a name of an actor a singer like hello where you live you know yeah, so, you know, people, they look for different quality and everybody, he define quality as he wish. Uh, <clears throat> is she beautiful? I forgot really, this was a long time ago. <laughs> I think she was, yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what kind of women I like? Really women walking down the street. Really woman. <clears throat> Real woman is a woman she can be a mother <clears throat> who is willing to sacrifice her life to her family, her children with love and dignity. Real woman is someone she protects the honor of her husband. Real woman is someone she make a promise and she keep her promise. Real woman is someone she is smart and nobody can divert her and change her mind by just making two statements to her. Real women is someone who will not allow strangers to involve in her life, in her private life, in her house. Now let us talk about the real man. It's exactly the same. Because it is not one side, it is two side. <clears throat> so everything we said about the women exactly goes for the man. And what goes for the women should goes for the man. Which means if the woman she is not allowed to do something is not right to be done, the man should have the same, let us say, uh, reasoning. <clears throat> right? No women, no cry. No, you might cry more if there is no women. Here we go. You know, like if you have to cook for yourself. <laughs> no, you know, see, it's good to have a family. Family is good, my friend, and we are a human. We are created to live as a social life. Family, you know, Adam, Eve, this is how God created us. So it's good to have, <clears throat> but you have to you have to find the right person. Otherwise, you will live in pain. You know, you will live in pain. Otherwise. Uh, you know, you have to be careful. You will live in pain, and though, and your wife will be in pain too. So you better be careful. <clears throat> uh, let us see why you are not married. I just said, if I find the woman, I you know, I can you know. First, I like to have a children. I love children, really, but I'm very, uh, very careful because I'm, I'm different. <clears throat> My life is different, so it's not that easy. Like, if I am married right now, do you think my wife she will like to see her husband staying until one a.m. in the morning? talking online you know what I mean <clears throat> so if you are married 
my mission will be impacted is going to be under the influence of situation I have. So in order for me to have a woman, she have to be a person who support me, not someone who oppose me. Someone she will be happy to sit next to me and to enjoy me doing what I do. And that is very rare because, you know, I mean, why in the world any woman she would accept that? <clears throat> and not only that, if I am married, you know, I, I, I see a lot of comments, which is kind of uh, sometimes uh, f uh, people flirting or etc. A woman, she is jealous, she will go crazy. You know, she will not understand that you have no control of what people say. So that can be another problem. You know, there's some women, they are crazy jealous. <clears throat> Back to the topic of the podcast. We are done with it. That's it. You can, you can play the video from the beginning. <laughs> we talk about it enough, my friend. <clears throat> yeah, we are, we are, you know, we spoke about the topic. Go from the beginning. You can go backward. You know, I mean, in the beginning of the podcast, you can hear it. Yeah. Anyway, you know, if the Lord, he he will, one day he will send me someone is good for me, why not? But if not, I'm happy like this, no problem. God is good. Japanese women for me, actually Japanese women are very good women. I heard that Japanese women are very, um, they, they have a lot of uh, like respect tradition. They have a good respect tradition. Yeah. I think there's, you know, there's good people everywhere, but how you can meet them, you know, for me, look, how many hours I spend online, where I'm going to meet people. And even if there is someone maybe good right there, how I can trust even to talk to anyone. It's not easy. <clears throat> right? Trust is a problem too. Jealousy is a sign of love, not too much CP. No, actually, jealousy jealousy is a sign of not being secure and not being confident. To make it simple for you, if I'm married and uh, my wife, you know, I saw my wife talking to somebody in the street and I get jealous, that means I'm not secure, you know, and I don't trust my wife. Why I want to be jealous? Jealous is a kind of illness, especially if there is no reason for it. Either you trust your husband or your wife, or you don't. If you trust, then there is no need for this. She is doing nothing wrong. If you don't trust, then we will have a big problem, because whatever she do, you will be jealous, and you will be upset, and you will be sad, and you will, uh, you will, not, uh, you will think she is doing something wrong. Your life would be hell, and her life would be hell. So actually, being with jealous person is a very bad decision. Never, never be careful. Jealous is very bad decision because he or she will turn your life into hell. If you speak on the phone, who's talking to you? What she want? Is is she? It's a girl or a guy? What you want? Where you will go? You know, that will turn into to a hell. This is not marriage. Jealous, jealousy. You know, there is. I I can say like jealous. Uh, you know, I mean, <clears throat> as something let us say uh, cute. Let us say, uh, you did not stay next to me for long. You know, you are away with your friends. I want to you know, come and sit me with me in the, in the table. I miss you. Okay, but not jealous from another man. I mean, especially your wife is doing nothing wrong. <clears throat> I remember once, uh, I'll tell you the story. Uh, once a guy, you know, uh, he, he, he called me. He said he think his wife is cheating on him. And I said, okay, come over. So, you know, I said to him, how, how you know? He said, there is a number, phone number, she called only when I am not home. I said, okay, interesting. And do you know the person? He said, no. He said, I called the same number. I heard his voice in the voice message. He said, today I'm going to talk to my wife. I'm going to tell her we cannot live together. You know, God cheating on me. I said, no, don't wait, just wait, wait, let me, let me see what, let me check. Give me the number. He gave me the number. <clears throat> he went home. 
And then I call the number. I call it first time, second time, third time. I mean, <laughs> guess what? The idiot, this is his voice message. She called the number when he is not home. She is calling him at work. He have a voice message he recorded many years ago. So when he don't answer the phone, his voice message, answer. He told me that the guy, I heard his voice in the voice message and he have a Middle Eastern accent. He's an Arab. <laughs> it turned to be him. <laughs> I listened first time, second time, third time. You see those, uh, those, uh, <clears throat> those companies, like, uh, uh, you know, like it's a big company. So uh, you dial a number and then it takes you to an extension. You know, you know like I mean, uh, so anyway, so he, he, what he knew, she is calling somebody obviously from his friends in the company there. It must be a friend, somebody he worked with him. But this is his voice. His voice changed, like, you know, the, in the voice message is a little bit different. So he thinks that his wife is cheating on him, speaking to someone else. So I called him. I said, I hope you did not talk to your wife. Did you? He said, no, not yet. You told me not to. I said, okay, come over. So we called the number. I said to him, listen, is this voice something for you? He said, no, I heard it before. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know this guy. I said, listen again. <laughs> it is him. <laughs> I said, okay. <clears throat> you said she called this number only when you are not home, right? She never called this number when you are home. Did you ask yourself why? Because she's calling you. Uh, sometime, with little stupidity, he can destroy your marriage. So imagine if this guy, he went to his wife and he accused her of a cheating. Then, you know, God knows what would happen. <clears throat> you have to be smart. And if you don't trust the person, you want to be marry him from then don't get married right uh, be nice mike all right guys <clears throat> i think we have we are done for today uh what's wrong with a slave bible cp tell people here slave bible you see, slavery in the Bible is you offering yourself to be a slave for seven years maximum, which means is a contract of work. Slavery in the Quran is people buying you and selling you forever. Did I answer you? Muslim undercover? Hulakoya, <clears throat> loyaya? Did I answer you? In Islam, you buy and you sell people. In the Bible, a slave would be free maximum after seven years. And slavery happened because simply like you borrow money from somebody. You cannot pay him back. So what do you do? You say to him, okay, me, uh, depend in the, in the how much you borrow. Me and even my family, my children, all of us, we will be slave for you and your servant for the coming three years. We will be your slaves. This is what slavery is about. Now, do you have that in your Quran? All your religion is about slavery. How many slaves do your prophet he own? He owned them, he raped them, he beat them. <laughs> Potato. <clears throat> Your prophet, even he received gifts, a human being, which means Amazon, they have a shipment. He opened the box, he found women and men inside the box, and he accepted that. And we can show you tons of reference. And you are talking about slavery. Right? Read CBN news about slave Bible? Uh -huh. We are shocked already, and you know we are shocked. CBN News, guys, read CBN News, Slave Bible. Let me tell you something, Abdul Potato. 
my lord the messiah even though he is the king of kings he never owned a slave the question is how many slaves the messiah he owned and how many slaves muhammad he owned you are a potato and we get you i get you get spanked with no mercy if a christianity is believe who teaches slavery then christ himself he should have his slaves paul should have his slaves peter should have his slaves all the disciples of Jesus should have slaves. Yet none of them have a slave. Yet all the followers of Muhammad have slaves. Muhammad have slaves. Abu Bakr have slaves. Omar have slaves. And they beat them too. All of them. So look who is talking. A goat who lost her tail is speaking about how beautiful her tail is. Potato. You are the last one to talk about slavery, you idiot. One of your prophet names is Ba'ir al Abid, the one who sells slaves. There's a book, it's called Muwatta Malik. Go and read it. All of it is about slavery. How to check a slave. How to lift up her skirt. How to check her vagina. How to check her ass. Go check. Stupid idiot. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, so today I noticed something that it's very hard for me to find a Muslim to debate me and it, it was not easy to find a fish <laughs> anyway I want to say guys thank you it's getting really late here I hope we had a good time I will try to be live on air again tomorrow uh, tomorrow actually today I mean Sunday already if I can but I would like you to relax in your house with your family or go out do something good Enjoy your weekend. Be beautiful with your wife. Be beautiful with your husband. Uh, you know, try to make a new... How many of you agree with me that you should not do laundry in the weekend? Let us see how many of you listen to my advice. How many of you listen to my advice? Don't do laundry in the weekend. Let us see. Anyone decide to change the habit of doing laundry in the weekend? Anyone? Hello? Nobody listen to my advice? Man, I'm the only one who don't do laundry in the weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say don't do laundry in the weekend. But I'm not sure how many of you uh, accepted that advice. Yeah, don't do laundry in the weekend. You know, let your house be something else. <clears throat> no laundry in Sunday. It is. It is Sabbath. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I mean, try to enjoy your weekend, make it something beautiful, something you refresh your life, get out, um, go somewhere, drive with your family. I mean, you know, do something new. So when the, when the, when the new week started, I mean, you will have something, you will have like more energy, new energy. Doing laundry and those stuff in the weekend is not really, it's not going to help you anyway I want to say thank you guys for being here and may the Lord bless you I'm not going to play music we will leave you without music I don't think anyone need it uh, I'm so glad to have you all of you uh, uh, whatever here we, we you know we try to to share with you it is a personal opinion when it comes to politics you don't have to agree with me maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm right uh, always you try to check out yourself what can be true and what can be wrong even if somebody is being truthful with you <clears throat> it doesn't mean necessarily that he's right because truthful is something and right is something else so someone can be truthful telling you what he believe in a true belief but it might be that he's wrong but he's not lying to you so whatever we say to you try to examine it like we spoke about the Middle East, peace, etc. Examine the information always. Don't take it into granted. Maybe it's wrong, maybe it's true. Examine it, think about it, and you make your own decision. Thank you again, and may the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again, maybe today, later, and maybe 10 hours from now or something. Until then, Christ is our Lord. He is our Savior. And we pray in this uh, beautiful Sunday. To keep you all safe and secure from all kind of illness, from all kind of danger, viruses, the world is going crazy. 
uh, pray for those who they are sick to be healed uh, we pray for Muslims uh, not to be driven by violence by ignorance to be smart and to live in peace we pray for peace for all mankind for all colors for all ethnic for all languages for all of us we are brothers and sisters and we have only one creator by him and for him everything was created that is the Christ the Messiah in his name we pray thank you and we see you soon again bye bye